trends. And I'm Shop Today Editorial Director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. This is Shop All Day, Today Bestsellers. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with a new episode of Shop All Day. And today, we are all about bestsellers. We did our homework and found best-selling and cult favorite products in fashion, hair, beauty, even a must-have for your furry friend. Yeah, we can't forget about them. So get ready to take notes, or we've actually made it easy for you. See that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today, or you can text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Get ready, everyone. This is the Amazon coat, the cult favorite, the number one bestseller, the viral sensation that shoppers cannot get enough of. So it's from Orle. And I have to tell you that this coat is as warm and cozy as it looks. But what I think shoppers love so much about it is its fashion and function. Yes, it's 100% down. And the brand says it is water resistant. It is even wind resistant. But it is also really, really stylish. To me, it looks like a designer jacket for a fraction of the price. And I think shoppers really respond to its really modern style. So it's got six big functional pockets, but it kind of gives it that cargo look. Plus, it's got that very on-trend oversized silhouette. It's boxy, it's modern looking, and it hits at a really, really flattering part on the leg. So it gives you a little bit more coverage so you can run around town in your leggings. And check out the interior. I just love this orange contrast and the hood. It's this plush Sherpa fabric. And it comes in lots of different styles, lots of different colors. And I have to tell you, every time I walk down the street, I see these. It is just that popular. Next up, how about a best-selling jogger with over 82,000 ratings? These are the Track Cup joggers by Leggings Depot, and shoppers say they can't get enough of these must-haves. First of all, they're a really flattering silhouette. They're sort of a hybrid between a legging and a slim cut jogger. And they're made out of this buttery soft material that the brand says actually happens to be moisture wicking. So it gives them lots of versatility. You can wear them while you're lounging around at home or you can wear them in the gym. Also, they've got pockets. Who doesn't love pockets? You've got two on the sides and then there's a little hidden pocket in the back Great to put in a credit card or your key. And they come in so many different colors and patterns. So it is no wonder that these are such a mega bestseller. Moving on to the number one best-selling flat on Amazon. These are the Amazon Essentials Women's Belize Ballet Flats. And these flats have over 30 7,000 ratings. That's a lot of passion for a ballet flat, but I totally get it. I'm passionate about my ballet flats. Why? Because whenever I wear them, I feel so pulled together. They are a classic. They have been a huge trend since 1940, and they're not going anywhere. And there are lots of iconic ballet flats out there that are a really high price point. So when I find a great looking ballet flat for an incredible price. I'm sorry, I get really excited. And these are a great price and a great style. They have a wonderful, flexible rubber sole. And that's one thing that you don't always see on a ballet flat. Sometimes the soles are really thin and made out of leather. So I love that with these, you get a little shock absorption and the footbed is really soft and plush. And these come in so many different styles and colors. Here we've got the black patent leather, which is a never go wrong. It's gonna go with everything in your closet. And I love the metallic gold. They've also got leopard print. They've also got suede-like finishes. They have such a great selection. Next, 
This item is not only one of the best-selling bags on Amazon, it's also a personal fave. So this is the Greenwald Crossbody Bag by Aldo. And I have to tell you, I love anything crossbody. I wear my crossbody bag every single day. Why? Because I love being hands-free, and also it actually adds a little jazz. It acts as an accessory when I wear it. So I can be running around town in leggings, I'm wearing my crossbody, and I look pretty stylish. But let me tell you what I like so much about this bag. First of all, it's got two of the biggest accessory trends we're seeing out there this season, and that is the quilting detail and the chains. And with quilting, I love that this has this modern quilting, this sort of angular geometric style, which I think is really chic. Also, the chains. I love a chain. I mean, look how stylish that is. And in my opinion, the size is really perfect. It's about 12 by seven inches. So it fits your essentials without being bulky. And it comes in some really great colors and even patterns and these classics, the bright red, the patent leather again, and this wonderful neutral. They even have some great faux snake patterns. Now onto some mega best-selling beauty. This shampoo brush and scalp massager from Hida has over 105,000 ratings and is a top seller on Amazon. So what I think is so exciting about this massage brush is that you can use it in three different ways. You can use it in the shower to help give your hair a great shampoo, and you can also use it as a scalp massager. You don't even have to be in the shower. And I also think that this is a great brush to use as a detangler once you get out of the shower. Next, we have a rinse out hair product called the Eight Second Wonder Water from L'Oreal that Shop Today editors are loving and they're not alone. This is a really popular product. And what it does is you put it in your hair after the shampoo, you rinse it out, and the brand says it helps to give your hair shine, it helps to smooth your hair, and helps to give it a little bit more body. And last but not least, let's talk mascaras. This is the Maybelline Sky High Waterproof Mascara, and it is a beauty fan fave. The brand says that it's infused with bamboo extract and fibers, so it helps to give you, you know, more voluminous lashes, and the brand says that it doesn't get flaky or smudge. Also, here's something I really like about it. Check out the mascara wand. It's called the Flex Power Wand, and that really helps you get in there with those tiny little lashes that can sometimes be hard to reach. And lastly, waterproof, right? Sometimes waterproof mascaras can feel hard and heavy. This mascara is also infused with rosehip oil, according to the brand. And what's so great about that is it helps make your lashes feel a little bit lighter, which I think shoppers really appreciate in a waterproof mascara. And the price is right. Let's run through our products one more time. We've got the Amazon Orlay Thick and Down Jacket, the Cuff Joggers, the Ballet Flats, the Aldo Greenwald Crossbody Bag, the Shampoo Brush and Scalp Massager, 8 Second Wonder Water, and the Maybelline Sky High Waterproof Mascara. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Plus, this episode solely features products available on Amazon, which has an affiliate relationship with today. That's it for Style Finder. You won't want to go away. We have Grammy, award-winning artist and entrepreneur, and real housewife of Atlanta, Candy Burris, with more of her favorite bestsellers. I wonder what made her list. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. I'm Mako Ndovu and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Today's show is all about our favorite best-selling products, and we turn to Grammy Award-winning artist, entrepreneur, and real housewife of Atlanta, Candy Burris, to ask her what made her list. Oh, Candy Burris, I am so excited to chat with you. How are you today? <laughs> I am great. How are you? I am doing great. Are you coming to us from Atlanta right now? Yes, I am in Atlanta at my office, and then I'm just... Happy to be talking to you. <laughs> oh, listen, I am super excited that you're here. Candy, we followed your journey over the years as a singer, an entrepreneur, a reality star. I mean, there's so many different hats that you wear. I'm curious to know, what does success mean to you right now? What does it look like to you? That's kind of crazy that you asked that question because I don't really think there's like one thing that I would say, but I think success is when you can also build up everyone around you, build up your community, build up your friends. When you can look back and say, not only did I get myself to a certain level of accomplishing my dreams and stuff, but it's when you help other people, it, you know, to be able to accomplish their dreams as well. That's when you know you really made an impact. Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about some of your iconic songs, right? I mean, there's so many hits, it would take me the whole hour to just name them. But if we were to put a song title over the course of your life right now, or the phase of life that you're in right now, what would it be? <laughs> oh, okay. If I have to go by one of the songs that I've written for someone else, I would say So Good. And I feel like that song, it makes me feel good. But the whole point of it is saying, you know, I'm doing so good. You know, it's like, for anybody who doubted you, anybody who hated on you or whatever, it's like, it's good because I'm doing so good. So hate all you want, look at me now. <laughs> I love that. And that song is such a classic. That's my workout song. It gets me super excited. It just gets me in the right zone. So you brought some items here, some best sellers, some top sellers. Let's start with the first one. Are you actually wearing the two piece? Yes. I love so, it. So the reason why, I know this is, this isn't what I would normally wear on the Today Show, but I just wanted to show you something that was just very comfortable, cool. Sometimes what I find is because I'm always doing like interviews or this or that, like normally I have a lot of dressy clothes, but I don't have a lot of lounge wear. I don't have a lot of chill outfits. So I just found a couple of, you know, cool chill outfits that I can just leave the house, have a good day in. And yeah, I wanted to share this one with you because you know, tie-dye is in, everybody loves tie-dye or whatever, and, and this one is comfortable, so yeah. I love that. First of all, the color looks great on you. And I'm curious to know, you love casual outfits. What does Todd, your husband, like on you? Does he like the more glam kind of candy? Oh. Or does he, he likes the casual, I'm wearing my drop outfit. Yes, it's funny you asked that because a friend of mine just and, you know, asked that question to him the other day. It was like, was like, you know, what is it that you like to see Candy in? And he was like, honestly, I like when she wears sneakers and uh -huh. jeans. And he's like, I just like when she's chill, you yeah. know? Cause you know, I guess, cause we do over the top a lot, you know, taping most of the year, you know, it's always, you know, how like, housewives, we gotta be done up girl, done up all the time. So I think he appreciates it more when it's just chill and relaxed. And you do it so well. Okay, let's move on to the next item that you have. These crayons are so cool. They're made of beeswax? Yes, so it's called all of us skin tone beeswax crayons, okay? But the thing that I find so cool is like any skin tone you can find. I don't know if you realize it, but a lot of times when you get your crayon box as a kid, I don't know about everybody, a lot of us, we can't find that perfect color that represents our skin tone. And so the woman who created this, um, she found for her child, it inspired her to make crayons that represented every skin tone. So all of us, that's what it's oh, all about. That's so beautiful. Listen, representation matters and it's fun where you can yes. make it educational and entertainment at the same time. Speaking of that, this book, Hair Love, I'm obsessed with, right? I know, it's so good. Yes, my son is Ace and my daughter's Blaze. So we definitely read together. This one right here is a good one. 
they want an award for this, okay? So it's not just us that's recognizing it, the world is recognizing how great this book really is. Um, I think it's amazing. The illustration is amazing. The story is amazing. Um, it obviously it talks about hair. So many people, once again, you know, when it comes to um, people of color, you know, and our hair types, honey, some people are just, you know, interested in what is, what is our hair doing? And so it was cool for this book to be able to explain that, telling the story of a father and his daughter. So I love this book. And by the way, it's narrated by Blue Ivy as well. So whether you get the audio or you get the physical book, this is absolutely great. Speaking of narration, let's talk about sound. These Bose speakers are fantastic. Tell me about them. Okay. Now, you know, I'm into music, so I'm a music girl and um, I travel a lot. You can use this at home or you can travel with it. But the cool thing about it, you can, you know, be out at the beach. We love taking this with us, me and Todd, when we go travel. I actually bought this in multiple colors. I know it sounds crazy, but something like this, for some reason, I end up like my kids take them from me and, and whatever. So it's like um, I had a blue one, I had an orange one. Ask me where any of them are. <laughs> the only one I have left is this black one, okay? Oh. I love it. I think more so because the sound quality is amazing. Which is so great. Listen, they're small, but they're mighty. Like, they pack a lot of sound. And that's what we love about Bose. Um, last but not least, let's talk about this water pick. But a lot of people weren't able to get to the dentist this past year, obviously. So this is a great pick. Tell me about it. So I got put on to the water pick. It kind of pressure washes your teeth. That's kind of like a simple way to try to put it, but it gets all into the crevices and the creases and the cracks and make sure that it gets out all of the stuff that you may not be able to reach. It's electric. I love electric toothbrushes, the water pick. I love all of that. So it is amazing. You would be amazed at what it will get out of your gums if you try it. Like hands down, I promise you it is bomb. I mean, I guess it, it kind of feels like if you went to the dentist and let them, you know, do the yeah. deep cleaning on your teeth, it kind of feels like that, but you get to do it at home. And you get to do it every day and it's like flossing. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. it really just cleans out your teeth. My sister has one and she has been telling me about it. So I'm so excited that you included it here. Okay, Candy, we're going to wrap here. Thank you for sharing your pics. This was so great chatting with you and we'll see you really soon. Thank you. It's great to talk to you, and I hopefully I will see you very soon. Absolutely. Now, let's run through all the products one more time. The Drop Women's Fleece Sweatpant and Sweatshirt. The Natural Beeswax Skin Tone Crayons for Coloring. The Hair Love Book. The Bose Soundlig Color 2 Portable Bluetooth Wireless Speaker. And the Waterpik Sonic Infusions 2.0. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Adriana Brock continues with more top sellers, including a launch from the brand behind one of the most popular facial razors. Do you use one? You don't know what it is? Stay tuned.
Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock and we've been having so much fun showing you products today that all of our viewers can't get enough of. And we're not done yet. I have more must have items that happen to be best sellers. And if you have a furry friend like I do, well, I have a popular product for them too. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You could scan the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to all the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all of the products we're sharing with you today. All right, so let's get started. This first one is a long sleeve turtleneck top that makes a great wardrobe staple. And it's also loved by so many editors on the SHOP Today team. It combines the classic look of a turtleneck with the comfort of an oversized silhouette, which makes it a winter must have. We really love this sweater because it comes in a wide range of sizes and colors, and you can easily style it with anything in your closet from your favorite pair of leggings for a casual look or a pair of jeans and boots for something a little bit more elevated. Today.com readers really love this style, but they're not alone. It actually has over 22,000 reviews on Amazon. And this next product is also a winter essential because you're gonna need this in your beauty routine. It is a brand new launch from the brand behind one of the most popular facial razors that our editors love. And it is so cool because Chic Hydro is a dermaplaning tool and it's a wand that helps improve the look and feel of your skin by gently sweeping away dull skin and peach fuzz. This tool also has a really cool ergonomic design. So when you're using it, it's really easy and it has a smooth edge. So it's gonna glide through skin. And one of the bonus parts about this is it comes with a few refills. So it's definitely one of those beauty products you didn't know you needed. This product is really great. And another beauty basic everyone should be using this winter is a hydrating serum from CeraVe. This is a tried and true brand that the Shop Today team and Today.com readers really love. It's super affordable and it's packed with hyaluronic acid, which is an ingredient a lot of dermatologists recommend to replenish skin's hydration. So think of a serum as a concentrated version of a face cream and you put the two together, you're gonna get this incredible hydrating serum that's perfect for dried out winter skin. The Shop Today editors really love this little bottle and say it packs a punch. One of our editors on the team actually joked that it's kind of like a drink of water for your skin. And I say, what more could you ask for? Okay, and moving on to home, we have these really cool pantry organizers. So I love a product that does more than one thing and this is it. So this is a great product to organize everything from a jam-packed refrigerator to all the kids' snacks, you keep the produce in one place, and even your beauty products. So really versatile. What I love about them too is that you could stack them together in a nested style so when you're not using them, they don't take a bunch of space up, but you can also stack them on top of each other when they are in use. You can also use these to organize the pantry, under the sink in the kitchen or the bathroom. Either way, it's a really versatile piece that you're gonna use all over the house. And because they're clear, you're gonna see everything. You don't have to go digging around looking for stuff. Super easy. Plus, you can't beat the value. These also come in a pack of eight, two different sizes. This product is really great. And this next product is a Shop Today editor favorite that makes meal prepping so easy. It has two compartments. The first one up top stores about a cup and a half of food in it, and then the one below stores two cups. And it also comes with cutlery, which is really great. And they're stackable, so they're not gonna take up a bunch of space. But you can still pack your full lunch in here. Another hack that I really like with this is you can get one different color for everybody in the family and assign everyone a different color so that they know that their lunch is ready to go. And if you love enjoying a glass of white wine or rosé, this cool tool is for you. The wine chiller stick is a really quick and easy way to chill your favorite bottle when it's at room temperature. All you have to do is pour out one glass and then you stick the tube in and it's super easy to use. So all you have to do is stick it in the freezer like you're making a tray of ice and then you get out your favorite bottle of wine, you pour out a glass, and then you put it in this chiller. It's super easy to use, and in just a few minutes, it's gonna cool your bottle and keep it that way. The design also has a rubber stopper, so you don't have to worry about drips or spills when you're done. All you have to do is wash it, put it in the freezer to store it until next time. And we can't forget about our furry friends. This cozy bed will keep them nice and comfortable. My dog Rocco really loves this bed, and so does my producer's dog Rosie. And we are not alone. This donut dog bed has over 53,000 human reviews. 
It's super popular on Instagram. It has a round, really cool design, and it's super fuzzy and shaggy to really keep them cozy and warm. And it also has a raised rim. So that's gonna give them the neck support that they need for their little head. It also comes in a bunch of different sizes, so cats and dogs of all sizes can really enjoy this cozy bed. So let's run through the products one more time. We have the long sleeve turtleneck, the Chic Hydro Silk Dermaplaning Wand, the CeraVe Hydrating Face Serum, the Pantry Organizers, the Bentco Stackable Bento Lunchbox, the Wine Chiller Cooling Stick, and the Calming Donut Dog Bed. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that's a wrap on Editor's Picks and our show today. This episode solely features products available on Amazon, which has an affiliate relationship with Today. It's been fun showing all of our favorite top sellers. Tune in next week for another episode of Shop All Day. Sponsored by Walmart. Whether you're vegetarian, vegan, or just trying to add more veggies into your routine, we've got three awesome dishes you are going to love. These vibrant recipes are full of flavor, and we promise you won't even miss the meat. I'm making my fully loaded Taco Supremes. And I'm taking a classic eggplant parm sandwich to the next level with crispy garlic bread. And I'm making gluten-free noodles with a spicy peanut sauce. It's time to set the table and get cooking. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. I'm going to say something that may shock you. I love fast food tacos. That's right, I said it. I know it may sound crazy coming from a vegan chef, but it's absolutely true. They're crunchy, savory, and with a little sour cream, chef's kiss. Today, I'm recreating that drive-through experience at home with a little vegan twist. And there's something else I really love about fast food taco places, their wacky sides. So let's get this taco party started with my crunchy, spicy potatoes. So I have one large russet potato and we're gonna dice these into small cubes. So you cut your thick slabs and now we can cut our cubes. The smaller you make them, the faster they'll cook and the crisper they'll be. So now we have our potatoes, so we're gonna get them into a bowl and start seasoning them. So we're gonna whip out my trusty masala dubby. So this is how we traditionally store all of our dried spices at home. So we're gonna add a whole bunch of seasonings to this. First and foremost, some chili powder. You can make these as spicy or as mild as you'd like. I obviously like them very spicy. Some cumin powder because we like that nice smoky flavor some unsalted taco seasoning, two big pinches of salt, and then a little secret ingredient, black salt, and then a little bit of olive oil, and then some black pepper, and then we toss. You wanna make sure all the pieces are coated well. Now we're gonna take these over to the air fryer. So we're just gonna get our potatoes right into the basket. Just make sure to spread them out evenly so they all cook. Now every air fry is different, but I'm gonna cook these at 350 for 15 minutes. All right, it's time to make our taco meat. You guys ready? We're gonna first start with dicing one onion. And this could just be a rough chop, as long as it's all the same size. 
Great, so we got our onions chopped. And next we want to mince up two cloves of garlic. Then we have two chipotle peppers in adobo. This is very spicy, but it adds a ton of flavor. So we're just gonna run our knives through the pepper. And again, just a rough chop. This is a little messy, so if you wanna wear gloves, you can. But I like to live on the wild side. So the key ingredient to our taco meat is actually chickpea flour. So we call this basin flour at home, and all it is are dry chickpeas that have been ground down to a flour. But the fun thing about this is it's packed with protein and really absorbs any flavor that you add to it. So I love using this for my meat substitute. We're gonna get our nonstick skillet hot. We're gonna get some neutral oil in. Just coat the bottom of the pan and let that heat up. So you add in your cumin seeds whole and once they get fragrant and pop for about 30 seconds, we know we're ready to add our aromatics. So we're gonna go in with our onions. Love that sizzle. And add in your garlic. Make sure to get it coated with the cumin seeds and the oil. And at this stage, we also wanna add a little bit of salt to help release the moisture in the onions. Okay, so now that the onions have sweated out and they're translucent, we're gonna go in with our chipotle. Spicy. Now that we've gotten our aromatics and our chilies in there, we're gonna add in our chickpea flour. So for this, we actually wanna reduce the heat just a bit to about medium low because we want to toast the flour a little bit before we add in our water. Just give that a good mix. So while this cooks down, there's one more seasoning we need to add from our masali dubby, and that is our Mexican seasoning. Depending on what type of Mexican seasoning you're using, it might look a little bit darker or lighter in color. My final ingredient is lime. You always have to add a little bit of acid to anything spicy that you're making to ensure that the flavors are balanced. And give this a little squeeze into our taco meat. This is smelling amazing. I'm gonna get all of my toppings so we can finish up our tacos. So what makes a taco truly supreme are all of the delicious toppings. So we have diced tomatoes, some sour cream. This is vegan sour cream. Yup, there's tons of variety of vegan sour cream available and they're all delicious. We also have some vegan cheddar shreds. They also have pepper jack, they have Monterey, basically anything that you could normally get as a cheese shred, you could get vegan now. All right, let's build our tacos. So we have our cute little shells here. And first we're gonna add our taco meat. So you wanna make sure to get a generous amount of filling. We don't wanna be stingy here. These are supreme. Next up is our vegan sour cream. So let's just take a little dollop. 
right in. Next, our iceberg lettuce, and then our tomato, and some of that vegan cheddar. And if you want a little squeeze of lime and some fresh cilantro. Look how cute this looks. I'm gonna make a few for you guys at home. And we can't forget about our crispy potatoes. So grab a spoon, all of those crispy, spicy taters into a bowl. And to top these, we're gonna add a little dollop of vegan sour cream. Which one should I go for? I think I'm gonna do the middle one. You know what I love about this? Is that there's so many flavors going on, especially within our meat. It's smoky, it's spicy, and then you have the freshness with all the supreme toppings. It's just like a flavor explosion because it has a lot of different textures. This doesn't taste anything like fast food. It definitely tastes better. Growing up, my family was obsessed with three things. Sandwiches, garlic bread, and chicken parm. So today I am making a recipe inspired by all three of those favorites. First things first, the star of the show, our eggplant. So let's get to slicing it. I'm just going to slice off the top and the bottom. And we are going to slice the eggplant into quarter inch thick pieces. So I always like making sure that I have a sharp knife whenever I'm cooking. And I'm always going to make sure that my hand has a good claw going so I can easily grasp that large eggplant. So we're going to lay all of these out in a single layer. And don't worry if they get too close, they're all pals here. And we are going to take them and give them a nice showering of salt. And if you are someone that doesn't wanna salt your eggplant, that's fine. You don't have to, I just find it's going to be a little bit crispier that way. Whenever I'm salting something, I love to salt it from nice and high up, and I'll essentially wag my fingers back and forth. And the reason why is because we wanna make sure we're getting a nice even coating, and the higher up, the more evenly it will fall. So we're just going to let this hang out for about five to 10 minutes so that all of that water can come up and out of the eggplant. And while that's hanging out, let's get started on our garlic. What makes this garlic bread so amazing is the toasted garlic. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna take a nice heavy bottom skillet. We are going to add that garlic right in and we are going to add in this neutral oil. We're using neutral oil here because it has a higher smoke point. So while we are cooking it, we first of all, aren't gonna need to worry about smoke going everywhere. And second of all, we are going to infuse that garlic into the oil itself. So we're gonna be left with this amazing garlicky oil that we are then going to fry our eggplant in. It's a double win and it's a one pan situation. So what's not to love? It's just joy all around. Let's get working on our parsley, fresh flat leaf Italian parsley. I just like twisting off those leaves and tender stems, okay? Oh, it's already smelling amazing in here. I wish smell vision were a thing. We're working on it. We'll get back to you on that. So with this big bunch of parsley, we are just going to take it and bunch it into a tight ball, okay? And then claw situation here. And you're just gonna take your knife and rock it back and forth to get these really finely chopped pieces. It's important that you have a sharp knife here because if you're using a dull knife, what's gonna happen is everything's gonna kind of bruise a bit. There you go. So as you can see here, our garlic is getting super toasty. We don't want it to get too golden too soon. So some of them are starting to get a little bit more golden than the others, which means they're just telling us I'm ready. I'm ready for the next step. So we will just take a couple of them out, the ones that look nice and golden. So what I like to do is I just like to turn off the heat and there's going to be some residual heat that hangs out in this pan that's going to continue cooking these cloves. These are looking stunning, absolutely gorgeous. Like they just have a fresh tan. Went to the tanning salon, I'm ready to rock. So we're going to take our slotted spoon and very carefully drain out that oil. 
by lifting those cloves out, giving them a little shake. Let's put them all on this board and get to work smashing these cloves. Okay, <laughs> these are looking really good. Look at that paste and look at the colors. I'm excited. Here we go. Parsley and garlic, pick that up. Pop it into the bowl. Next up, we're just gonna swap these trays around so that I can bring all of my fabulous butter ingredients and bread ingredients a bit closer. The star of the show, unsalted butter. We wanna make sure that it is unsalted and softened so it can easily mix together. Another thing is Parmesan, this beautiful, freshly ground Parmesan is salty naturally. So we are going to just take our spoon and just start mixing everything together. Put in some work. Okay, our butter is done. It's looking absolutely stunning, if I do say so myself. And next up, ciabatta. Okay, palm of your hand, place it flat on the top of the bread. We're using a serrated knife here, which has these little teeth in it. And the serrated knife is going to allow us to cut through this ciabatta beautifully. Boom, look at that. I have a little offset spatula here. It's gonna do a nice job of helping us spread everything evenly. But let me tell you, if you just use the back of a spoon, that will absolutely suffice. I know this seems like a lot of butter, but I promise you with the thickness of the bread, it is going to be just right. Guess what time it is? Oven time. We are going to pop it into a 425 degree oven. So make sure you preheat that before for about five to six minutes until it is nice and golden. Our favorite color, golden brown. While that bakes, I'm gonna clean up a little and get ready to fry my eggplant. We're using the same oil that we used earlier for the garlic, so it is infused with that delicious garlicky flavor. It is shimmering, which is what we're looking for. We want it to be at about a medium high heat. And then we're going to very delicately lower our eggplant into that oil. And we're just gonna cook this in batches. We're gonna cook it for about three minutes per side. And since eggplant is really spongy and porous, it's going to want to absorb even more of that oil. So to make sure that we have a nice crispy eggplant, we're gonna drain it on some paper towels. Okay, these are done. We are going to transfer them to a paper towel and get to work on our next batch. How gorgeous and golden these look. I'm going to clean up and get the rest of the ingredients for our sandwich. What I like to do with burrata is I like to take a paper towel and very delicately lift up this beautiful ball of burrata, which is basically like mozzarella's sassy sister, I would say. So we just take that ball of burrata we are going to very delicately open it up and look at that. It is so creamy and delicious. I didn't say this was gonna be a very neat experience. This is a get your hands dirty kind of sandwich, my friends. We are going to layer on our eggplant and we're just going to kind of shingle it because this is really acting as our meat layer. So we really wanna make sure that there is a nice substantial amount of eggplant here. Next up, our warmed sauce. More cheese. <laughs> it wouldn't be an eggplant parm sandwich without more parm. And last but certainly not least, some fresh basil to brighten everything up. Depending on how big your ciabatta loaf is, you can cut this into four to six slices. I'm gonna cut it into four slices today. Are you kidding me? Gorgeous. And now there is only one thing left to do, and that is to take a bite. Mmm, it is so good. 
This is messy, but it's hearty. And it is delicious. And it is the ultimate eggplant parm sandwich on garlic bread. Is there anything on my face? I'm sure there is. And I don't care. Plant-based eating and plant-dominant eating is more popular than ever these days. And let's face it, when you eat more veggies, you feel better. So it's a no-brainer. This spicy little dish is vegetarian and gluten-free, so it checks a lot of boxes if you have folks in your family that have different dietary needs. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make our sauce. And this is the perfect balance of sweet and salty flavor. So I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar. This is some brown sugar, but you can add some coconut sugar. I'm also gonna add in some water. This is some low sodium soy. Next, we're gonna add in some peanut butter. And be sure that you get the all natural peanut butter, not the kind with the sugar in there. And then some red chili garlic sauce. If you don't have this, some sriracha will also do just fine. Then we're gonna add in some lime. Give this a good whisk. You want to mix it up until it's nice and smooth. And if you need a little bit of help, you can put this into the microwave for about 15 seconds. Okay, now let's move on to our noodles. These are rice noodles. Some of the fresh rice noodles though, you only have to blanch for about one or two minutes in some hot water. These are a little bit different. It's gonna take a little bit longer to soak and to soften. And don't worry if they're not all the way soft after about 20 or 30 minutes because we're actually going to cook everything together in a pot and that's going to loosen them up as well. I'm going to just push these down, make sure they're completely submerged in the hot water. Now let's move on to the star of this dish and those are our amazing veggies. I love having a three color rule and my three color rule is whenever you eat a meal, you want to have at least three different colors and those colors have to come from legumes, grains, veggies, or fruit. We've got a beautiful red cabbage. Gonna slice this up. I'm gonna slice this in half. One more again. Cut out the core here, middle. And if you haven't already, if this is fresh out of the grocery store, just peel back that first layer just in case. Moving on now to our carrots. We're gonna julienne these. So get yourself a little carrot peeler or your veggie peeler and just shave down the outside of them. And then we're gonna chop this. So one, two, three. So one, two, three. And then put your knife right there on the side of it. 
and you're gonna cut very thin slices of carrot. And then we're gonna stack the pieces on top of one another, just like this. They should lay flat. And then we're gonna move on to the green onion. Now, scallions. You know what, and looking at this, I think our noodles are done. Let me just go ahead and, yep, see that? So I'm just gonna drain these in the sink. All right, noodles finished. Back to the veggie chopping. Purple, orange, green. Let's get a little bit of garlic action in here. Mince this up really finely. There we go. Garlic finished. And let's roll up some cilantro as well and dice that up as well. Okay, so we have all of our veggies cut. Let's move on to the tofu. Now I've been letting this rest between two plates to squeeze out the excess moisture. Straight out of the package, it's just packed with a ton of water and liquid. And you want to be able to squeeze out that moisture because we're gonna saute this and it will not saute if it's just really watery. And I usually press mine for about 30 minutes, but you can also do this overnight in the fridge. And then we're gonna slice this in half and then into small cubes. All right, so we are finished prepping our ingredients. Let me go grab the skillet and cook all this gorgeous food up. All right, so we're gonna fire up our skillet. This is a nonstick skillet. I'm gonna put it on medium heat. First thing we're gonna do is cook up our egg. I'm gonna be using whole eggs. There we go, whisk this. I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of oil. This is some avocado oil. You know I love the avocado oil being from Texas. And in go the eggs. Doesn't take eggs long to cook at all. And just scramble them up just like this. I take them off the heat just when they're almost finished so that way I won't overcook them. I'm gonna give it a little bit more spray with some avocado oil and in goes the tofu. Ooh, I love that sound. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. Got some low sodium tamari. I'm gonna just sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. Look at that. You can bring it up. Look at that, and all of a sudden, look at that color. Beautiful color. We can bring it up, right, set this back down, and we're gonna let this rest unbothered. So I'm gonna take a little bit of coconut oil here. Just a little bit, you don't need much. Let that melt. All right, in go the aromatics with the onion, carrot, and our chopped cabbage. It's gonna give us a good toss. Now, here is my rule about cooking up vegetables. You want them to wilt down a little bit, but you still want them to be crisp. And you want them to have a lot of color, right? So I don't wanna cook them down so much that I lose the beautiful vibrancy of this just because that still represents nutrients, antioxidants, fiber, and all those good things, right? Looking great. Now, I'm gonna add in the garlic now. I'm adding in the garlic afterwards because I don't want the garlic to burn and get really bitter. Next, we're gonna add back in our protein. In go the eggs. In goes the tofu. 
We got protein on protein here. I'm not going to lie. It looks really nice. Let's add in our rice noodles. And you don't want to overcrowd your skillet, so you may have to do this part in batches and just toss everything together. I like using tongs at this point because you can better mix the ingredients together. Last bit of work. We're going to add in some bean sprouts, pop of color, and cilantro, and we're going to pour in a little bit of our sauce. Just keep tossing everything together. I like to stir this for about two to three minutes, let those flavors really melt together, and then we're gonna plate it up. And don't let it fool you, this is spicy. We're gonna add a little bit of crunch factor with some peanuts. Need to add just a little bit more cilantro, some fresh lime juice, and in personal preference, I like to lift up the flavors just a little bit with some lime zest. Ooh, and there you have it. Look at this beautiful rainbow noodle bowl with spicy peanut sauce. Mm -hmm. This is such a delicious, hearty, filling dish. Plant-based eating is not all rabbit food. I know you and your family will enjoy this spicy peanut sauce and this amazing rainbow noodle bowl. Hello and thank you for joining us here on The Boost. I'm Jenna Bush Hager. Today is National Read Across America Day and we're celebrating our beloved hobby with tales of intrepid readers all across the nation. Let me introduce you to a nonprofit whose mission it is to give all children the opportunity to snuggle up with a good book. Take a look. We have a real live author, and she's come here just to read to you all. Do y'all wanna meet her? This is Karen, everybody. Hi. Good to see you all. So you guys, I'm gonna read a story to you. It's called Flying Free. It's the story of the first black female pilot. This is a pandemic version of a school assembly. Author Karen Parsons visits PS91 in the Bronx to share her new children's book, Flying Free. Bessie said, oh yeah? You just wait and see. There'll be a black female pilot and it'll be me. But instead of a crowd, there's just a handful of kids, all masked and socially distanced. Limitations now the norm after a year of making do. We are all too familiar with these images of need, families struggling to put food on the table, children going without. And in the midst of this pandemic, a new need revealed. So the pandemic is making what was already a bad situation worse. The reality is even kids right here in the United States don't have good access to books. Libraries have closed and schools are shuttered, creating larger and larger book deserts across the country. Donkey. Donkey. Donkey sit. The nonprofit World Reader has spent the last decade helping get books into the hands of kids through tech, reaching 17 million globally. All the animals in Mangu's farm were sleeping. Now World Reader is focusing their efforts here at home, launching their BookSmart app that gives kids access to hundreds of books for free. Immediately, within two clicks, he or she can begin to read. And the great thing is, they can read books from all around the world. Hi, everyone. Hi. 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 Raise your hand if you love to read. Oh, I see hands everywhere. The nonprofit also connects with families directly through grassroots programs in America's hardest hit areas, like here in Appalachia, where kids gather for a weekly book club. What are some of your favorite books? Yeah, Underpants. Captain Underpants is hilarious, isn't it? Yeah. I have a big surprise for you guys today. You're gonna have a reading from the author of the Cat Kid Comic Club, Dog Man, Captain Underpants. His name is Dave Pilkey. Could Dave pop in? Maybe. Cross your fingers. <laughs> hey, everybody. Good oh, morning. There he is. I know you just started reading this, and I was thinking that maybe I could um, read the first chapter for you. Would you? Would like y'all love that if you yeah. read a little bit? 
Hey guys, welcome to the first meeting of the Cat Kid Comic Club. Hooray! At this time where our lives have kind of become closed in, there's no more important time to sort of explore the world. Someone told me once reading is like a low cost ticket to see the world. And that's absolutely right. And so our end game is that every child becomes his or her best self uh, through reading and, and we hope we can help. And back in New York, it will take more than a pandemic to dampen a love of reading. It's important to keep reading, right? Yeah. yeah. Do Miss Parsons just encourage you to read more? And now we have a father who overcame extraordinary obstacles to empower his son and the children in his community through his creativity and love of learning. Fred Melvin has this incredible story. It's been said that you can't keep a good man down. Harry Bell is the living proof. Harry was born on the rough side of Bridgeport, Connecticut. He says his mother was addicted to crack cocaine and at birth, so was he. What's this neighborhood like? A lot of drugs, gun, and violence. His mom died when he was just nine years old. His father was never in the picture. As a teenager, Harry started making bad choices. I, I probably drunk from 14 years old to like 22. Wow, yeah, you just, started drinking at 14? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was there a moment where you're like, ah, I gotta, gotta get my life together? My son was probably about four or maybe three and a half. All I remember was walking my son home. I fall and I black out. Mm. The only thing I remember after that was waking up in a puddle of blood and my son smacking me saying, Daddy, get up, get up, get up, Daddy. That was the day I realized that I had a problem and things had to change. Harry changed his life, quit drinking, started working as a school resource officer, but he really turned the page when he created his own coloring book for his son. My son, he loved the color. I wanted something different. I wanted something, something fun, education, and empowering. And I wanted him to say that it was a special gift that he got from his dad. You couldn't get this from nowhere but me. I love that. Yeah. His son took that book everywhere, even to school, where his teacher didn't believe his dad created it. The teacher said, your son keeps saying you made this book. And I told him, you did not. This is from Scholastic. I said, nah, I made that book for him. She said, I want you to give each kid in my class a book and explain each page. And I did that. And the rest is history. Snowball from there. Harry started selling the coloring books in his neighborhood. How many coloring books did you end up putting out there? Do you know? About over 20,000. I was selling coloring books on the same block where people were selling dope. So they were selling dope, I was selling hope. People thought I was crazy. He took the money from selling books and poured it right back into his community. He started a nonprofit called Color of Positive Thought and began holding programs for local children on his patio, then after school in this community center. What programs happen under this roof? We had a week of programs. On Monday, we focus on nothing but homework, entrepreneurship, and things of that nature. Tuesdays, we do basketball. Uh, Wednesday, we do uh, karate, kickboxing, slash fitness. Thursday, we do rugby, got a rugby team. Harry has become a Pied Piper of optimism, gaining devoted followers like Jose Santiago and his son, Jordan. Why do you think that Harry's approach has been so effective? His commitment, the way he's so committed to the program, the way that the kids just love him. They love him in a way like, you know, as like a father figure. What have you come to, to learn here? What have you been doing? I learned how to like help people, get along with people. It built a lot of like confidence for me to go do my own things. Like I got my own job off of confidence from working from this one. During after school programs, the kids get a meal. There's also food for them to take home. And you can bet Harry does something special for the holidays. From organizing a hayride for Halloween to handing out turkeys for Thanksgiving. And the heart, as big as Harry's, is a perfect fit for a red suit and white beer come Christmas time. You have three kids. Mm -hmm. I think you have three jobs. Mm -hmm. And you still make time for this. Yeah. Why? Because this ain't my doing. I'm very spiritual. This is a God's gift. You know, I'm just a vessel, just doing the work 
of a higher power. Mm. So everything's going to work out, I believe. Up next, a group that's inspiring a love of books around the globe after this. Welcome back to The Boost. We're celebrating National Read Across America Day. And this next organization is inspiring a love of literature, not just here at home, but around the world. Take a look at how one tragedy turned into triumph. Hindi was just the smartest educator I have ever met. She was always bubbly and engaged and just trying to push people to think about new things and interesting things. Dr. Hindi Krinsky was a beloved wife, a nurturing mother of five. Tell me what memories you have around your mom. She read uh, the first book of Harry Potter to us. No and uh, she also read Little House on the Prairie to us and Charlotte's Web. And a lover of literature. Is it true that the first time you met her, she had 30 books? Yes, <laughs> what turned into our first date. She, I walk into the cafe and she's sitting there with like 20 books on the desk that she had been schlepping around all day. Yeah. Were you impressed? Was I impressed? Yeah, of course I was impressed. <laughs> that was the beginning of the couple's storybook life. And what was she like as a mom? She would come home and put on meatloaf or somehow she fell into Emmylou Harris. I don't know how that I love, happened. I love both of them. Yeah, yeah, but you're from Dallas. <laughs> yeah, She's from Brooklyn. Yeah, exactly. Um, she really loved to do and create that like um, warm, happening home life. That was, that was so handy. Professionally, Hindi was a high school English teacher in Cedarhurst, New York, where she shared her passion of literature, writing, and reading. She constantly pushed us to kind of be the best versions of ourselves. She fostered a love of literature, a love of learning. But in 2018, tragedy struck when the 32-year-old went to the hospital with stomach pains and suddenly passed away from complications with Crohn's disease. Within maybe eight hours of being in the hospital, she was gone. Um, so that was, it was very fast, like no warning. That was a bad day. It must have been shocking and difficult. And you have these five little babes who didn't even know they needed to say goodbye to their mom. Yeah. We were all just devastated. I couldn't believe it. I was like really heartbroken. People just felt like they were robbed because she was just one of a kind. There are times when you're grieving and you just don't know what to do. There's no like playbook. Hear that your community just rallied around y'all. Yeah, there was right away, the thing I needed help with the most was food right yeah. away. At some point, a principal approached me and said, we need to do something for the kids. Leslie Gang was the communications director at Hindi's school. She asked for book donations to help fill a small free library in Hindi's honor. And then something magical happened. The books just kept coming. And at that point I looked at Dove and I totally remember this conversation. I'm like, so we're gonna do all 50 states now? <laughs> Thousands of donated books poured in. David and Leslie stored them at their homes, stamped each box with Hindi's name, and within six months shipped box after box to communities in need in all 50 states and beyond, putting books in the hands of kids who need it most. 
we serve low income areas of, in, in our community with free book fairs. It's really an honor to be a part of her legacy. Where's the farthest your books have gone? Israel, India, definitely Canada. We sent to Africa sometime in the past year. Michelle Alcott created a library for girls in a small Kenyan village. It helps with their drama and expands their mind in terms of uh, what is happening outside the world. And closer to home, Bronx librarian Rosanna Golazano helps build at-home libraries. I'm reading Big Nate Goes for Broke. I chose Warriors. Bird Magic. I love my dad. It's the whole family that benefits from having a home library from Hindi's libraries free of charge. It's a beautiful celebration. It comes from love and care, and it's going into the hearts of the kids who need it most. What do you think the girl who showed up with 30 books to your first date would think about all this? I, I think she would be very impressed. That was her dream to build a community of readers. That's exactly right. The power of Hindi's libraries is so clear. It's just so easy and it requires, you're, you never doubt that what you're doing is an amazing thing mm -hmm. by handing a kid a book. And we are so lucky because with us now are the co-founders of Hindi's Libraries, Hindi's husband, David Karnafogel, I hope I said that right, <laughs> Leslie Gang, along with elementary school librarian oh. Rosanna Golisano from the PS11 in the Bronx. This is an amazing story, just how far reaching it is. Do you know how big, how big it's gotten, how many books you've been able to donate at, to this point? We've done, at this point, over 300,000 books. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little emotional after just watching that. Um, yeah, it's amazing how we've been able to take something that Hindi was passionate about uh, professionally, but also personally, and turn it into this amazing project that reaches individual kids, um, individual families reaching out from books that they've, they've read to their children, and now they're able to pass those on. It's it really is. humbling. Yeah, it's it's I, an emotional moment. I was just watching, we were watching you watch <clears throat> your lovely wife and everything that she's done. Yeah, it's hard not to smile at painful memories sometimes. Um, that painful that they're memories, but and it's amazing to see. You yeah. also said something to me I'll never forget. You mm. said beauty comes out of tragedy, mm -hmm. and this is what you all have created. Mm -hmm. You've created this beautiful mm -hmm. organization that is helping so many. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You really are. Leslie, what mm -hmm. does it look like to, <laughs> when you see all of this? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's wild to think that a couple of years ago we were building a little box and all of a sudden <laughs> our garages are filled with books. We're, you know, begging for storage spaces and, you know, ways to bring this to the world. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. And in the Bronx, it's overflowing, Rosanna. <laughs> uh, Come tell on, me I'm about so it. Into you. I mean, there's no, it, Bronx is a book desert, okay? Yeah. It was a book desert until Hindi's libraries came. Yeah. But it's a book desert. You can't even go, children cannot go purchase a book in the Bronx. So this is completely, there's one bookstore yeah, the in the bar. Bronx. The Lit Bar. That's it. Exactly. I know the Lit Bar. You're good. <laughs> You're good. There's one shelf of children's that's, books. That's in the, crazy. Okay? That's so this crazy. is changing their DNA to be able to get a book, mm -hmm. pick a book, bring it home, and read with their family. You can see. Yeah, can basis. we also just say yeah. that librarians like you are e everywhere, and yeah. educators yeah, right. like exactly. Hindi are changing their DNA. And before you all go, we, ha yeah. we, we have to do a little something. Oh, yeah, a little surprise. We yeah. have to just do a little something. Mm -hmm. So Kohl's, you know what? They share Hindi's passion for mm -hmm. reading, and they support their communities. Mm -hmm. So they have decided that through Kohl's Cares Merchandise Program, they are donating $10,000 wow. to Hindi's life. Oh, Kohl's! Yes, indeed. That's pretty amazing. cool. 10,000. I'm just calculating how many books. Yeah, yeah that's a lot. Can yeah, you picture it? Amazing. How do you think that'll change things, Leslie? Um, a lot. Yeah, a lot of, I'm now thinking about sword. the work to be done, yeah. but like, yeah, that's amazing. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, we there, have, there's no, more. That's not it. There's more, Rosanna. We know how important it is for you to build at home libraries for your students. So, Penguin Random House and Random House Children's Books, they're donating 1,000 award winning right children's books oh, to your library at PS11. Student Rosanna is going to go home with at least two books. <laughs> I know, oh, this dream. is a dream for the families. We cannot thank you enough. No, thank you so much. Thank you all for all the work you're amazing. doing. Wow, amazing, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. Wow, thank you, thank you. We love y'all. Oh, what an inspiring legacy to leave behind. Now stay with us for the sweet story behind an author taking TikTok by storm 
thanks to his beloved daughter. That's up next. Welcome back. These next faces may look familiar to you. Meet the father-daughter duo who went viral on TikTok, making this dad a best-selling author for the first time at the age of 74. Take a look. Oh my gosh. This is 74-year-old Lloyd Devereaux Richards from Montpelier, Vermont. Well, now we got, uh, oh boy. He's reacting to the news that his novel he published 11 years ago just reached number one in the serial killer thriller genre on Amazon. His path to literary stardom has been nothing short of a social media miracle. Just two weeks ago, Lloyd's daughter, Marguerite, posted this video introducing the world to her father, the author, and the story behind his crime thriller, Stone Maidens, a passion project written little by little over 14 years. Sales had almost entirely dropped off when Marguerite went to TikTok, hoping to get a few more people to read her dad's work. So far, her video has been viewed more than 47 million times. In the last week, Lloyd went from having almost no sales in a decade to having the number one book of any genre on Amazon. Definitely a good read already. All while inspiring his millions of new fans to fall deeper in love with reading and to never, ever give up. These last couple of days, I just, I, I can't understand it. I feel blessed. Oh, oh my we're gosh. so and lucky. We have Lloyd Devereaux Richards, author of Stone Maidens, and his daughter, Marguerite Richards, making their exclusive television debut here with us. Good morning. Oh, good morning. my gosh. Good morning. Lloyd, watching that, how much your daughter loves you, uh, and, and knowing that it took a bit to get here, but here you are, how does it feel? Uh, overwhelming still. Um, I'm very grateful to her and to everybody here. Without my daughter and her love and support of me, um, this would not be happening. This is so beautiful and it's about so much more than a book. It's about a father and his daughter. So Marguerite, tell us how you came up with the idea, how you got it up on TikTok, and then how stunned you must have been as nearly 50 million people viewed this. Yeah, so I grew up watching my dad write I knew how much time he put into it. He'd work all day. He'd come home, have dinner with me and my brothers and spend time with us and grab little pockets of writing. And then when it published, we were so excited, like so proud of him. And um, over the next 11 years, there wouldn't be much uh, of, a, of a following or readers. And so he was never negative. He always stayed positive. And in fact, he kept writing. And so when he finished the sequel last summer, 
it touched me because no one had read his first book. Mm. So that broke my heart a little and I was like, I mentioned to him, like, Dad, what if I made a little video on TikTok? And he didn't know what, as he said, Tic Tac was. <laughs> so um, he kind of just, it just didn't happen. And then when I caught him rifling through his papers in that first video, that's where he wrote the book, I was just kind of going through making a video without him really knowing. And I created an account and posted it. And no one knew this. And, uh, yeah, just in the hopes that a few people would read his first book, that was what I was hoping. A few. L yeah, Lloyd, to know that it was number one, to know that it's become, you know, a bestseller. After all these years. Um, I, uh, I'm speechless. Uh, I am, I think when she showed me the comments when she revealed it, you showed a piece of that. Uh, this, this, so many people were saying such kind things to me. It gave me, um, a totally different opinion uh, from, you know, I, I didn't know that young people wanted to even uh, read a book like mine or that they were reading so much and it seems like they really are reading. And that really touched me that our country's in good shape if people want to read books. Oh, I feel that same way. And yeah. we know that you feel so grateful that this social media miracle helped elevate your book and you wanted to give a, a couple other authors a little shout out which just says yes. everything about you. Um, will you tell us your your recommendations if people want to read? Absolutely. Um, I live in Vermont, like you know, and uh, my first book, Cursed in New England by Joseph Citro. He's sort of a storyteller himself and speaks in theater, schools, uh, you know, elaborating with theatrical ability. His stories about curses and strange Ooh. disappearances in New England, largely in Vermont. Fun. Based on true at least accounts. The second book, um, What Remains of Her by Eric Rick Rickstad is a thriller in rural Vermont set mm -hmm. there. And again, um, he, he wrote a fine book and uh, like myself, it just didn't reach all that many readers. And uh, the third is State of Redemption by Richard McEwen. It's independently published in uh, 2021. It's uh, about two lives headed in opposite directions with one thing in common. They were both witnesses to a murder. Ooh. Oh. And it's an excellent <laughs> read. And uh, again, um, not very well circulated. So, Well, we know one thing. Your second book is going to get <laughs> a lot of attention. Um, and you know what? We're also really excited because we know that your book isn't sold uh, in many stores, but we wanted to tell you that we love you so much and we want other people to read your book. So right across the street, hopefully we can see it at the shop at 30 Rock right there. Do you see right there? We have an entire window dedicated to Stone Maiden so that visitor, visitors can stop in and buy it in person. So maybe you can come and do a signing. What do you think about that? Uh, definitely. I would love to. <laughs> well, yeah. you are the hottest author in America after all. <laughs> Head over to today.com slash books to check out Stone Maidens and Lloyd's full list of recommendations. And stick around for your daily morning boost after the break.
Welcome back. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. We've got a nice boost for you. Take a look. Look out, Sylvester Stallone, your replacement just arrived, and he is only one year old. Uh, Check out this toddler. He's going step oh, for yeah, step. Look yeah. at this for Rocky this Balboa in a training montage. This is from the 1979 blockbuster Rocky II. Yeah, from the push-ups to the wood chopping, oh. the sit-ups. I mean, he has everything right. down pat. While most kids his age are probably glued, I don't know, to Nickelodeon or something. This little one appears to be a Netflix kind of guy. Not to worry, unlike Rocky, oh, yeah. this boxing yeah. baby didn't have to take on Apollo Creed at the end of his training season. That's right. Although he does look like he's carrying a little extra weight. In about the <laughs> diaper. He did that with five pounds There's on There's no time wow, for I'm diaper change. Right, right there. there. <laughs> You can't get enough of those videos. And don't forget to make time for a good book today and let your imagination run wild. See you next time here on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We need to pull up one extra chair at the table. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Dovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media in influencer trends. And I'm Shop Today editorial director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. This is Shop All Day, Today Best Sellers. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with a new episode of Shop All Day. And today, we are all about best sellers. We did our homework and found best-selling and cult favorite products in fashion, hair, beauty, even a must-have for your furry friend. Yeah, we can't forget about them. So get ready to take notes, or we've actually made it easy for you. See that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Get ready, everyone. This is the Amazon coat, the cult favorite, the number one bestseller, the viral sensation that shoppers cannot get enough of. So it's from Orle, and I have to tell you that this coat is as warm and cozy as it looks. But what I think shoppers love so much about it is its fashion and function. Yes, it's 100% down, and the brand says it is water resistant, it is even wind resistant, but it is also really, really stylish. To me, it looks like a designer jacket for a fraction of the price. And I think shoppers really respond to, it's really modern style. So it's got six big functional pockets, but it kind of gives it that cargo look. Plus, it's got that very on-trend oversized silhouette. It's boxy, it's modern looking, and it hits at a really, really flattering part on the leg. So it gives you a little bit more coverage so you can run around town in your leggings. And check out the interior. I just love this orange contrast and the hood. It's this plush Sherpa fabric. And it comes in lots of different styles, lots of different colors. And I have to tell you, every time I walk down the street, I see these. It is just that popular. Next up, how about a best-selling jogger with over 80 2,000 ratings. These are the Track Cuff Joggers by Leggings Depot, and shoppers say they can't get enough of these must-haves. 
First of all, they're a really flattering silhouette. They're sort of a hybrid between a legging and a slim cut jogger. And they're made out of this buttery soft material that the brand says actually happens to be moisture wicking. So it gives them lots of versatility. You can wear them while you're lounging around at home or you can wear them in the gym. Also, they've got pockets. Who doesn't love pockets? You've got two on the sides and then there's a little hidden pocket in the back. Great to put in a credit card or your key. And they come in so many different colors and patterns. So it is no wonder that these are such a mega bestseller. Moving on to the number one best-selling flat on Amazon. These are the Amazon Essentials Women's Belize Ballet Flats. And these flats have over 37,000 ratings. That's a lot of passion for a ballet flat, but I totally get it. I'm passionate about my ballet flats. Why? Because whenever I wear them, I feel so pulled together. They are a classic. They have been a huge trend since 1940 and they're not going anywhere. And there are lots of iconic ballet flats out there that are a really high price point. So when I find a great looking ballet flat for an incredible price, I'm sorry, I get really excited. And these are a great price and a great style. They have a wonderful, flexible rubber sole. And that's one thing that you don't always see on a ballet flat. Sometimes the soles are really thin and made out of leather. So I love that with these, you get a little shock absorption and the footbed is really soft and plush. And these come in so many different styles and colors. Here we've got the black patent leather, which is a never go wrong. It's gonna go with everything in your closet. And I love the metallic gold. They've also got leopard print. They've also got suede-like finishes. They have such a great selection. Next, this item is not only one of the best-selling bags on Amazon, it's also a personal fave. So this is the Greenwald Crossbody Bag by Aldo. And I have to tell you, I love anything crossbody. I wear my crossbody bag every single day. Why? because I love being hands-free and also it actually adds a little jazz. It acts as an accessory when I wear it. So I can be running around town in leggings, I'm wearing my crossbody and I look pretty stylish. But let me tell you what I like so much about this bag. First of all, it's got two of the biggest accessory trends we're seeing out there this season and that is the quilting detail and the chains. And with quilting, I love that this has this modern quilting, this sort of angular geometric style, which I think is really chic. Also, the chains. I love a chain. I mean, look how stylish that is. And in my opinion, the size is really perfect. It's about 12 by seven inches. So it fits your essentials without being bulky. And it comes in some really great colors and even patterns and these classics, the bright red, the patent leather again, and this wonderful neutral. They even have some great faux snake patterns. Now onto some mega best-selling beauty. This shampoo brush and scalp massager from HEDA has over 105,000 ratings and is a top seller on Amazon. So what I think is so exciting about this massage brush is that you can use it in three different ways. You can use it in the shower to help give your hair a great shampoo, and you can also use it as a scalp massager. You don't even have to be in the shower. And I also think that this is a great brush to use as a detangler once you get out of the shower. Next, we have a rinse out hair product called the Eight Second Wonder Water from L'Oreal that Shop Today editors are loving and they're not alone. This is a really popular product. And what it does is you put it in your hair after the shampoo, you rinse it out. And the brand says it helps to give your hair shine and helps to smooth your hair and helps to give it a little bit more body. And last but not least, Let's talk mascaras. This is the Maybelline Sky High Waterproof Mascara, 
and it is a beauty fan fave. The brand says that it's infused with bamboo extract and fibers, so it helps to give you, you know, more voluminous lashes, and the brand says that it doesn't get flaky or smudge. Also, here's something I really like about it. Check out the mascara wand. It's called the Flex Power Wand, and that really helps you get in there with those tiny little lashes that can sometimes be hard to reach. And lastly, waterproof, right? Sometimes waterproof mascaras can feel hard and heavy. This mascara is also infused with rosehip oil, according to the brand. And what's so great about that is it helps make your lashes feel a little bit lighter, which I think shoppers really appreciate in a waterproof mascara. And the price is right. Let's run through our products one more time. We've got the Amazon Orlay Thicken Down Jacket, the Cuff Joggers, the Ballet Flats, the Aldo Greenwald Crossbody Bag, the Shampoo Brush and Scalp Massager, 8 Second Wonder Water, and the Maybelline Sky High Waterproof Mascara. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Plus, this episode solely features products available on Amazon, which has an affiliate relationship with today. That's it for Style Finder. You won't want to go away. We have Grammy award-winning artist and entrepreneur and real housewife of Atlanta, Candy Burris, with more of her favorite bestsellers. I wonder what made her list. Stay Welcome back. I'm Mako Zovu and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Today's show is all about our favorite best-selling products, and we turn to Grammy Award-winning artist, entrepreneur, and Real Housewife of Atlanta, Candy Burris, to ask her what made her list. 
Oh, Candy Birds, I am so excited to chat with you. How are you today? <laughs> I am great. How are you? I am doing great. Are you coming to us from Atlanta right now? Yes, I am in Atlanta at my office, and then I'm just happy to be talking to you. <laughs> oh, listen, I'm super excited that you're here. Candy, we followed your journey over the years as a singer, an entrepreneur, a reality star. I mean, there's so many different hats that you wear. I'm curious to know, what does success mean to you right now? What does it look like to you? That's kind of crazy that you asked that question, because I don't really think there's like one thing that I would say, but I think success is when you can also build up everyone around you, build up your community, build up your friends. When you can look back and say, not only did I get myself to a certain level of accomplishing my dreams and stuff, but it's when you help other people, it, you know, to be able to accomplish their dreams as well. That's when you know you really made an impact. Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about some of your iconic songs, right? I mean, there's so many hits. It would take me the whole hour to just name them. But if we were to put a song title over the course of your life right now or the phase of life that you're in right now, what would it be? <laughs> oh, okay. If I have to go by one of the songs that I've written for someone else, I would say So Good. And I feel like that song, it makes me feel good. But the whole point of it is saying, you know, I'm doing so good. You know, it's like, for anybody who doubted you, anybody who hated on you or whatever, it's like, it's good because I'm doing so good. So hate all you want, look at me now. <laughs> I love that. And that song is such a classic. That's my workout song. It gets me super excited. It just gets me in the right zone. So you brought some items here, some best sellers, some top sellers. Let's start with the first one. Are you actually wearing the two piece? Yes. I love so, it. So the reason why, I know this is, this isn't what I would normally wear on the Today Show, but I just wanted to show you something that was just very comfortable, cool. Sometimes what I find is because I'm always doing like interviews or this or that, like normally I have a lot of dressy clothes, but I don't have a lot of lounge wear. I don't have a lot of chill outfits. So I just found a couple of, you know, cool chill outfits that I could just leave the house, have a good day in. And yeah, I wanted to share this one with you because you know, tie-dye is in, everybody loves tie-dye or whatever, and, and this one is comfortable, so yeah. I love that. First of all, the color looks great on you, and I'm curious to know, you love casual outfits. What does Todd, your husband, like on you? Does he like the more glam kind of candy, oh. or does he, he likes the casual, I'm wearing my drop outfit? Yes, it's funny you ask that, because a friend of mine just you know, asked that question to him the other day. It was like, was like, you know, what is it that you like to see Candy in? And he was like, honestly, I like when she wears sneakers and oh. jeans. And he's like, I just like when she's chill, you yeah. know, because you know, I guess because we do over the top a lot, you know, taping most of the year. You know, it's always, you know, how like, housewives we got to be done up, girl, done up all the time. So I think he appreciates it more when it's just chill and relaxed. And you do it so well. Okay, let's move on to the next item that you have. These crayons are so cool. They're made of beeswax? Yes, so it's called All of Us Skin Tone Beeswax Crayons, okay? But the thing that I find so cool is like any skin tone you can find. I don't know if you realize it, but a lot of times when you get your crayon box as a kid, I don't know about everybody, a lot of us, we can't find that perfect color that represents our skin tone. And so the woman who created this, um, she found for her child, it inspired her to make crayons that represented every skin tone. So all of us, that's what it's oh, all about. That's so beautiful. Listen, representation matters and it's fun where you can yes. make it educational and entertainment at the same time. Speaking of that, this book, Hair Love, I'm obsessed with, right? I know, it's so good. Yes, my son is Ace and my daughter's Blaze. So we definitely read together. This one right here is a good one. They won an award for this, okay? So it's not just us that's recognizing it, the world is recognizing how great this book really is. Um, I think it's amazing. The illustration is amazing. The story is amazing. Um, it obviously it talks about hair. So many people, once again, you know, when it comes to um, people of color, you know, and our hair types, honey, some people are just, you know, interested in 
what is, what is our hair doing? And so it was cool for this book to be able to explain that, telling the story of a father and his daughter. So I love this book. And by the way, it's narrated by Blue Ivy as well. So whether you get the audio or you get the physical book, this is absolutely great. Speaking of narration, let's talk about sound. These Bose speakers are fantastic. Tell me about them. Okay. Now, you know, I'm into music, so I'm a music girl. And um, I travel a lot. You can use this at home or you can travel with it. But the cool thing about it, you can, you know, be out at the beach. We love taking this with us, me and Todd, when we go travel. I actually bought this in multiple colors. I know it sounds crazy, but something like this, for some reason, I end up like my kids take them from me and, and whatever. So it's like, um, I had a blue one, I had an orange one. Ask me where any of them are. <laughs> the only one I have left is this black one, okay? Oh. I love it. I think more so because the sound quality is amazing. Which is so great. Listen, they're small, but they're mighty. Like, they pack a lot of sound. And that's what we love about Bose. Um, last but not least, let's talk about this water pick. A lot of people weren't able to get to the dentist this past year, obviously. So this is a great pick. Tell me about it. So I got put on to the water pick. It kind of pressure washes your teeth. That's kind of like a simple way to try to put it, but it gets all into the crevices and the creases and the cracks and make sure that it gets out all of the stuff that you may not be able to reach. It's electric. I love electric toothbrushes, the water pick. I love all of that. So it is amazing. You would be amazed at what it will get out of your gums if you try it. Like. Hands down, I promise you, it is bomb. I mean, I guess it, it kind of feels like if you went to the dentist and let them, you know, do the yeah. deep cleaning on your teeth, it kind of feels like that, but you get to do it at home. You get to do it every day, and it's like flossing. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. it really just cleans out your teeth. My sister has one, and she has been telling me about it, so I'm so excited that you included it here. Okay, Candy, we're going to wrap here. Thank you for sharing your pics. This was so great chatting with you, and we'll see you really soon. Thank you. It's great to talk to you, and I hopefully I will see you very soon. Absolutely. Now, let's run through all the products one more time. The Drop Women's Fleece Sweatpant and Sweatshirt. The Natural Beeswax Skin Tone Crayons for Coloring. The Hair Love Book. The Bose Soundlink Color 2 Portable Bluetooth Wireless Speaker. And the Waterpik Sonic Infusions 2.0. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Adriana Brock continues with more top sellers, including a launch from the brand behind one of the most popular facial razors. Do you use one? You don't know what it is? Stay tuned.
Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock and we've been having so much fun showing you products today that all of our viewers can't get enough of. And we're not done yet. I have more must have items that happen to be best sellers. And if you have a furry friend like I do, well, I have a popular product for them too. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can scan the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to all the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all of the products we're sharing with you today. All right, so let's get started. This first one is a long sleeve turtleneck top that makes a great wardrobe staple. And it's also loved by so many editors on the SHOP Today team. It combines the classic look of a turtleneck with the comfort of an oversized silhouette, which makes it a winter must have. We really love this sweater because it comes in a wide range of sizes and colors, and you can easily style it with anything in your closet from your favorite pair of leggings for a casual look or a pair of jeans and boots for something a little bit more elevated. Today.com readers really love this style, but they're not alone. It actually has over 22,000 reviews on Amazon. And this next product is also a winter essential because you're gonna need this in your beauty routine. It is a brand new launch from the brand behind one of the most popular facial razors that our editors love. And it is so cool because Chic Hydro is a dermaplaning tool and it's a wand that helps improve the look and feel of your skin by gently sweeping away dull skin and peach fuzz. This tool also has a really cool ergonomic design. So when you're using it, it's really easy and it has a smooth edge. So it's gonna glide through skin. And one of the bonus parts about this is it comes with a few refills. So it's definitely one of those beauty products you didn't know you needed. This product is really great. And another beauty basic everyone should be using this winter is a hydrating serum from CeraVe. This is a tried and true brand that the Shop Today team and Today.com readers really love. It's super affordable and it's packed with hyaluronic acid, which is an ingredient a lot of dermatologists recommend to replenish skin's hydration. So think of a serum as a concentrated version of a face cream and you put the two together, you're gonna get this incredible hydrating serum that's perfect for dried out winter skin. The Shop Today editors really love this little bottle and say it packs a punch. One of our editors on the team actually joked that it's kind of like a drink of water for your skin. And I say, what more could you ask for? Okay, and moving on to home, we have these really cool pantry organizers. So I love a product that does more than one thing and this is it. So this is a great product to organize everything from a jam-packed refrigerator to all the kids' snacks, you keep the produce in one place, and even your beauty products. So really versatile. What I love about them too is that you could stack them together in a nested style so when you're not using them, they don't take a bunch of space up, but you can also stack them on top of each other when they are in use. You can also use these to organize the pantry, under the sink in the kitchen, or the bathroom. Either way, it's a really versatile piece that you're gonna use all over the house. And because they're clear, you're gonna see everything. You don't have to go digging around looking for stuff. Super easy. Plus, you can't beat the value. These also come in a pack of eight, two different sizes. This product is really great. And this next product is a Shop Today editor favorite that makes meal prepping so easy. It has two compartments. The first one up top, stores about a cup and a half of food in it. And then the one below stores two cups. And it also comes with cutlery, which is really great. And they're stackable, so they're not gonna take up a bunch of space. So you can still pack your full lunch in here. Another hack that I really like with this is you can get one different color for everybody in the family and assign everyone a different color so that they know that their lunch is ready to go. And if you love enjoying a glass of white wine or rosé, this cool tool is for you. The wine chiller stick is a really quick and easy way to chill your favorite bottle when it's at room temperature. All you have to do is pour out one glass and then you stick the tube in and it's super easy to use. So all you have to do is stick it in the freezer like you're making a tray of ice and then you get out your favorite bottle of wine, you pour out a glass, and then you put it in this chiller. It's super easy to use, and in just a few minutes, it's gonna cool your bottle and keep it that way. The design also has a rubber stopper, so you don't have to worry about drips or spills when you're done. All you have to do is wash it, put it in the freezer to store it until next time. And we can't forget about our furry friend. This cozy bed will keep them nice and comfortable. My dog Rocco really loves this bed, and so does my producer's dog Rosie. And we are not alone. This donut dog bed has over 53,000 human reviews. 
It's super popular on Instagram. It has a round, really cool design, and it's super fuzzy and shaggy to really keep them cozy and warm. And it also has a raised rim, so that's gonna give them the neck support that they need for their little head. It also comes in a bunch of different sizes, so cats and dogs of all sizes can really enjoy this cozy bed. So, let's run through the products one more time. We have the long sleeve turtleneck, the Chic Hydro Silk Dermaplaning Wand, the CeraVe Hydrating Face Serum, the Pantry Organizers, the Bentco Stackable Bento Lunchbox, the Wine Chiller Cooling Stick, and the Calming Donut Dog Bed. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that's a wrap on Editor's Picks and our show today. This episode solely features products available on Amazon, which has an affiliate relationship with Today. It's been fun showing all of our favorite top sellers. Tune in next week for another episode of Shop All Day. Sponsored by Walmart. Whether you're vegetarian, vegan, or just trying to add more veggies into your routine, we've got three awesome dishes you are going to love. These vibrant recipes are full of flavor, and we promise you won't even miss the meat. I'm making my fully loaded Taco Supremes. And I'm taking a classic eggplant parm sandwich to the next level with crispy garlic bread. And I'm making gluten-free noodles with a spicy peanut sauce. It's time to set the table and get cooking. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor Walmart by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. I'm going to say something that may shock you. I love fast food tacos. That's right, I said it. I know it may sound crazy coming from a vegan chef, but it's absolutely true. They're crunchy, savory, and with the little sour cream, chef's kiss. Today, I'm recreating that drive through experience at home with a little vegan twist. And there's something else I really love about fast food taco places, their wacky sides. So let's get this taco party started with my crunchy, spicy potatoes. So I have one large russet potato and we're gonna dice these into small cubes. So you cut your thick slabs and now we can cut our cubes. The smaller you make them, the faster they'll cook and the crispier they'll be. So now we have our potatoes, so we're gonna get them into a bowl and start seasoning them. So we're gonna whip out my trusty masala dubby. So this is how we traditionally store all of our dried spices at home. So we're gonna add a whole bunch of seasonings to this. First and foremost, some chili powder. You can make these as spicy or as mild as you'd like. I obviously like them very spicy. Some cumin powder because we like that nice smoky flavor some unsalted taco seasoning, two big pinches of salt, and then a little secret ingredient, black salt, and then a little bit of olive oil, and then some black pepper, and then we toss. You wanna make sure all the pieces are coated well. Now we're gonna take these over to the air fryer. So we're just gonna get our potatoes right into the basket. Make sure to spread them out evenly so they all cook. Now every air fry is different, but I'm gonna cook these at 350 for 15 minutes. All right, it's time to make our taco meat. You guys ready? We're gonna first start with dicing one onion. And this could just be a rough chop, as long as it's all the same size. 
Great, so we got our onions chopped. And next we want to mince up two cloves of garlic. Then we have two chipotle peppers in adobo. This is very spicy, but it adds a ton of flavor. So we're just gonna run our knives through the pepper. And again, just a rough chop. This is a little messy, so if you wanna wear gloves, you can. But I like to live on the wild side. So the key ingredient to our taco meat is actually chickpea flour. So we call this basin flour at home, and all it is are dry chickpeas that have been ground down to a flour. But the fun thing about this is it's packed with protein and really absorbs any flavor that you add to it. So I love using this for my meat substitute. We're gonna get our nonstick skillet hot. We're gonna get some neutral oil in. Just coat the bottom of the pan and let that heat up. So you add in your cumin seeds whole and once they get fragrant and pop for about 30 seconds, we know we're ready to add our aromatics. So we're gonna go in with our onions. Love that sizzle. And add in your garlic. Make sure to get it coated with the cumin seeds and the oil. And at this stage, we also wanna add a little bit of salt to help release the moisture in the onions. Okay, so now that the onions have sweated out and they're translucent, we're gonna go in with our chipotle. Spicy. Now that we've gotten our aromatics and our chilies in there, we're gonna add in our chickpea flour. So for this, we actually wanna reduce the heat just a bit to about medium low because we want to toast the flour a little bit before we add in our water. Just give that a good mix. So while this cooks down, there's one more seasoning we need to add from our masali dubby, and that is our Mexican seasoning. Depending on what type of Mexican seasoning you're using, it might look a little bit darker or lighter in color. My final ingredient is lime. You always have to add a little bit of acid to anything spicy that you're making to ensure that the flavors are balanced. And give this a little squeeze into our taco meat. This is smelling amazing. I'm gonna get all of my toppings so we can finish up our tacos. So what makes a taco truly supreme are all of the delicious toppings. So we have diced tomatoes, some sour cream. This is vegan sour cream. Yup, there's tons of variety of vegan sour cream available and they're all delicious. We also have some vegan cheddar shreds. They also have pepper jack, they have Monterey. Basically anything that you could normally get as a cheese shred, you could get vegan now. All right, let's build our tacos. So we have our cute little shells here. And first we're gonna add our taco meat. So you wanna make sure to get a generous amount of filling. We don't wanna be stingy here. These are supreme. Next up is our vegan sour cream. So let's just take a little dollop, 
right in. Next, our iceberg lettuce, and then our tomato, and some of that vegan cheddar. And if you want a little squeeze of lime and some fresh cilantro. Look how cute this looks. I'm gonna make a few for you guys at home. And we can't forget about our crispy potatoes. So grab a spoon, all of those crispy, spicy taters into a bowl. And to top these, we're gonna add a little dollop of vegan sour cream. Which one should I go for? I think I'm gonna do the middle one. You know what I love about this? Is that there's so many flavors going on, especially within our meat. It's smoky, it's spicy, and then you have the freshness with all the supreme toppings. It's just like a flavor explosion because it has a lot of different textures. This doesn't taste anything like fast food. It definitely tastes better. Growing up, my family was obsessed with three things. Sandwiches, garlic bread, and chicken parm. So today I am making a recipe inspired by all three of those favorites. First things first, the star of the show, our eggplant. So let's get to slicing it. I'm just going to slice off the top and the bottom. And we are going to slice the eggplant into quarter inch thick pieces. So I always like making sure that I have a sharp knife whenever I'm cooking. And I'm always going to make sure that my hand has a good claw going so I can easily grasp that large eggplant. So we're going to lay all of these out in a single layer. And don't worry if they get too close, they're all pals here. And we are going to take them and give them a nice showering of salt. And if you are someone that doesn't want to salt your eggplant, that's fine. You don't have to. I just find it's going to be a little bit crispier that way. Whenever I'm salting something, I love to salt it from nice and high up, and I'll essentially wag my fingers back and forth. And the reason why is because we want to make sure we're getting a nice even coating, and the higher up, the more evenly it will fall. So we're just going to let this hang out for about five to 10 minutes so that all of that water can come up and out of the eggplant. And while that's hanging out, let's get started on our garlic. What makes this garlic bread so amazing is the toasted garlic. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna take a nice heavy bottom skillet. We are going to add that garlic right in and we are going to add in this neutral oil. We're using neutral oil here because it has a higher smoke point. So while we are cooking it, we first of all, aren't gonna need to worry about smoke going everywhere. And second of all, we are going to infuse that garlic into the oil itself. So we're gonna be left with this amazing garlicky oil that we are then going to fry our eggplant in. It's a double win and it's a one pan situation. So what's not to love? It's just joy all around. Let's get working on our parsley, fresh flat leaf Italian parsley. I just like twisting off those leaves and tender stems, okay? Oh, it's already smelling amazing in here. I wish smell of vision were a thing. We're working on it. We'll get back to you on that. So with this big bunch of parsley, we are just going to take it and bunch it into a tight ball, okay? And then claw situation here. And you're just gonna take your knife and rock it back and forth to get these really finely chopped pieces. It's important that you have a sharp knife here because if you're using a dull knife, what's gonna happen is everything's gonna kind of bruise a bit. There you go. So as you can see here, our garlic is getting super toasty. We don't want it to get too golden too soon. So some of them are starting to get a little bit more golden than the others, which means they're just telling us, I'm ready, I'm ready for the next step. So we will just take a couple of them out, the ones that look nice and golden. So what I like to do is I just like to turn off the heat and there's going to be some residual heat that hangs out in this pan that's going to continue cooking these cloves. These are looking stunning, absolutely gorgeous. Like they just have a fresh tan, went to the tanning salon, they're ready to rock. So we're going to take our slotted spoon and very carefully drain out that oil. 
by lifting those cloves out, giving them a little shake. Let's put them all on this board and get to work smashing these cloves. Okay, <laughs> these are looking really good. Look at that paste and look at the colors. I'm excited. Here we go. Parsley and garlic, pick that up. Pop it into the bowl. Next up, we're just gonna swap these trays around so that I can bring all of my fabulous butter ingredients and bread ingredients a bit closer. The star of the show, unsalted butter. We wanna make sure that it is unsalted and softened so it can easily mix together. Another thing is Parmesan, this beautiful, freshly ground Parmesan is salty naturally. So we are going to just take our spoon and just start mixing everything together. Put in some work. Okay, our butter is done. It's looking absolutely stunning, if I do say so myself. And next up, ciabatta. Okay, palm of your hand, place it flat on the top of the bread. We're using a serrated knife here, which has these little teeth in it. And the serrated knife is going to allow us to cut through this ciabatta beautifully. Boom, look at that. I have a little offset spatula here. It's gonna do a nice job of helping us spread everything evenly. But let me tell you, if you just use the back of a spoon, that will absolutely suffice. I know this seems like a lot of butter, but I promise you with the thickness of the bread, it is going to be just right. Guess what time it is? Oven time. We are going to pop it into a 425 degree oven. So make sure you preheat that before for about five to six minutes until it is nice and golden. Our favorite color, golden brown. While that bakes, I'm gonna clean up a little and get ready to fry my eggplant. We're using the same oil that we used earlier for the garlic, so it is infused with that delicious garlicky flavor. It is shimmering, which is what we're looking for. We want it to be at about a medium high heat. And then we're going to very delicately lower our eggplant into that oil. And we're just gonna cook this in batches. We're gonna cook it for about three minutes per side. And since eggplant is really spongy and porous, it's going to want to absorb even more of that oil. So to make sure that we have a nice crispy eggplant, we're gonna drain it on some paper towels. Okay, these are done. We are going to transfer them to a paper towel and get to work on our next batch. how gorgeous and golden these look. I'm going to clean up and get the rest of the ingredients for our sandwich. What I like to do with burrata is I like to take a paper towel and very delicately lift up this beautiful ball of burrata, which is basically like mozzarella's sassy sister, I would say. So we just take that ball of burrata we are going to very delicately open it up and look at that. It is so creamy and delicious. I didn't say this was gonna be a very neat experience. This is a get your hands dirty kind of sandwich, my friends. We are going to layer on our eggplant and we're just going to kind of shingle it because this is really acting as our meat layer. So we really wanna make sure that there is a nice substantial amount of eggplant here. Next up, our warmed sauce. More cheese. <laughs> it wouldn't be an eggplant parm sandwich without more parm. And last but certainly not least, some fresh basil to brighten everything up. Depending on how big your ciabatta loaf is, you can cut this into four to six slices. I'm gonna cut it into four slices today. Are you kidding me? Gorgeous. And now there is only one thing left to do, and that is to take a bite. Mmm, it is so good. 
This is messy, but it's hearty. And it is delicious. And it is the ultimate eggplant parm sandwich on garlic bread. Is there anything on my face? I'm sure there is, and I don't care. Plant-based eating and plant-dominant eating is more popular than ever these days. And let's face it, when you eat more veggies, you feel better. So it's a no-brainer. This spicy little dish is vegetarian and gluten-free, so it checks a lot of boxes if you have folks in your family that have different dietary needs. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our sauce. And this is the perfect balance of sweet and salty flavors. So I'm going to add a little bit of sugar. This is some brown sugar, but you can add some coconut sugar. I'm also gonna add in some water. This is some low sodium soy. Next, we're gonna add in some peanut butter. And be sure that you get the all natural peanut butter, not the kind with the sugar in there. And then some red chili garlic sauce. If you don't have this, some sriracha will also do just fine. Then we're gonna add in some lime. Give this a good whisk. You want to mix it up until it's nice and smooth. And if you need a little bit of help, you can put this into the microwave for about 15 seconds. Okay, now let's move on to our noodles. These are rice noodles. Some of the fresh rice noodles, though, you only have to blanch for about one or two minutes in some hot water. These are a little bit different. It's going to take a little bit longer to soak and to soften. And don't worry if they're not all the way soft after about 20 or 30 minutes because we're actually going to cook everything together in a pot and that's going to loosen them up as well. I'm going to just push these down, make sure they're completely submerged in the hot water. Now let's move on to the star of this dish and those are our amazing veggies. I love having a three color rule and my three color rule is whenever you eat a meal, you want to have at least three different colors and those colors have to come from legumes, grains, veggies, or fruit. We've got a beautiful red cabbage. Gonna slice this up. I'm gonna slice this in half. One more again. Cut out the core here, middle. And if you haven't already, if this is fresh out of the grocery store, just peel back that first layer just in case. Moving on now to our carrots. We're gonna julienne these. So get yourself a little carrot peeler or your veggie peeler and just shave down the outside of them. And then we're gonna chop this. So one, two, three. So one, two, three. And then put your knife right there on the side of it. 
and you're gonna cut very thin slices of carrot. And then we're gonna stack the pieces on top of one another, just like this. They should lay flat. And then we're gonna move on to the green onion. Now, scallions. You know what, and looking at this, I think our noodles are done. Let me just go ahead and, yep, see that? So I'm just gonna drain these in the sink. All right, noodles finished. Back to the veggie top. Purple, orange, green. Let's get a little bit of garlic action in here. Mince this up really finely. There we go. Garlic finished. And let's roll up some cilantro as well and dice that up as well. Okay, so we have all of our veggies cut. Let's move on to the tofu. Now I've been letting this rest between two plates to squeeze out the excess moisture. Straight out of the package, it's just packed with a ton of water and liquid. And you want to be able to squeeze out that moisture because we're gonna saute this and it will not saute if it's just really watery. And I usually press mine for about 30 minutes, but you can also do this overnight in the fridge. And then we're gonna slice this in half and then into small cubes. All right, so we are finished prepping our ingredients. Let me go grab the skillet and cook all this gorgeous food up. All right, so we're gonna fire up our skillet. This is a nonstick skillet. I'm gonna put it on medium heat. First thing we're gonna do is cook up our egg. I'm gonna be using whole eggs. There we go, whisk this. I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of oil. This is some avocado oil. You know I love the avocado oil being from Texas. And in go the eggs. Doesn't take eggs long to cook at all. And just scramble them up just like this. I take them off the heat just when they're almost finished so that way I won't overcook them. I'm gonna give it a little bit more spray with some avocado oil and in goes the tofu. Ooh, I love that sound. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. Got some low sodium tamari. I'm gonna just sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. Look at that. You can bring it up. Look at that, and all of a sudden, look at that color. Beautiful color. We can bring it up, right, set this back down, and we're gonna let this rest unbothered. So I'm gonna take a little bit of coconut oil here. Just a little bit, you don't need much. Let that melt. All right, in go the aromatics with the onion, carrot, and our chopped cabbage. It's gonna give us a good toss. Now, here is my rule about cooking up vegetables. You want them to wilt down a little bit, but you still want them to be crisp. And you want them to have a lot of color, right? So I don't wanna cook them down so much that I lose the beautiful vibrancy of this just because that still represents nutrients, antioxidants, fiber, and all those good things, right? Looking great. Now, I'm gonna add in the garlic now. I'm adding in the garlic afterwards because I don't want the garlic to burn and get really bitter. Next, we're gonna add back in our protein. In go the eggs. In goes the tofu. 
We got protein on protein here. I'm not gonna lie, it looks really nice. Let's add in our rice noodles. And you don't wanna overcrowd your skillet, so you may have to do this part in batches and just toss everything together. I like using tongs at this point because you can better mix the ingredients together. Last bit of work, we're gonna add in some bean sprouts, pop of color, that cilantro, and we're gonna pour in a little bit of our sauce. Just keep tossing everything together. I like to stir this for about two to three minutes, let those flavors really melt together, and then we're gonna plate it up. And don't let it fool you, this is spicy. We're gonna add a little bit of crunch factor with some peanuts. Need to add just a little bit more cilantro, some fresh lime juice, and in personal preference, I like to lift up the flavors just a little bit with some lime zest. Ooh, and there you have it. Look at this beautiful rainbow noodle bowl with spicy peanut sauce. Mm -hmm. This is such a delicious, hearty, filling dish. Plant-based eating is not all rabbit food. I know you and your family will enjoy this spicy peanut sauce and this amazing rainbow noodle bowl. Welcome to The Boost. I'm Chanel Jones filling in for Hoda today. March is Women's History Month, and today we are all about girl power and inspirational stories of female entrepreneurs. But to start, one woman's hobby, helping reunite people with cherished family heirlooms. See how she's working to make sure no photo gets left behind. Special education teacher Kate Kelly Moonlights as a detective. These are the ones, the unsolved mysteries. Unsolved mysteries, yes. Solving cases rarely as black and white as they appear. I would say this was mm, 1880s maybe, if I were to just roughly guess. Kelly's sleuthing starts with a vintage photo rescued from an antique shop. Ooh, this one's cool, look at this. Horse. Oh yeah, look at that. 50% off. <laughs> Just a small inscription gives her investigation a lead. <gasps> Look at this one. That's a good one. That's fantastic. Keeper pile. And when a case is closed, a once orphaned image returns to a loving home. Would you say this process is addictive? Absolutely. It's 100% addictive. The passion project started about a year ago, but Kelly's love of genealogy has been alive since her childhood, well before the advent of websites like Ancestry.com that now help her identify anonymous faces from times long ago. I can't let them live in a dusty box in an antique store, so they come home with me and I do my best to connect them with relatives. By day in Plainville, Massachusetts, she's teaching. But for several hours a night, Kelly is learning the story behind each photo to find a living connection. It was my dad's senior picture with his identical twin. When Kate Griffin heard from Kelly about this photo in February, it had been just three weeks since her beloved father had passed away. I told her I was my eyes were filled with tears and joy, and she has had no idea how much that meant to me because I'd never, never seen that before. Anecdotes like this one earned Kelly a title, the photo angel. She shares her search stories on Facebook, collecting more than 9,000 followers. By her count, Kelly has mailed the unkept keepsakes to 42 states and five countries. This picture of young Ethel Weiss now heading home. She's buried in Arlington, Virginia, but her picture will soon be in the care of her 93-year-old husband. And this of Simeon Staples, headed to family in Rhode Island, a shovel shop worker in the late 1800s. Kelly pays out of pocket for the photos and the postage. She says her payment comes another way. It's just, it's an overwhelming feeling of joy and it's what keeps me going. The labor of love has to express yes. the, a message here and your message would be? My message would be preserve the past. Um, just you don't know who you are until you know who you, your ancestors are. 
And sometimes when it seems the past is lost, it may just be taking a long way home. Katie Beck, Attleboro, Massachusetts. From preserving the past to working towards the future, next up, four women who were brought together by divorce and now have an entirely new kind of family. See why they are encouraging everyone to burn the rule book of life. At any given moment, I have people I can talk to, laugh with. We do a lot of laughing. Karen Hopper, Leandra Nicola, Holly Harper, and Jen Jacobs all say they found their dream home here in Tacoma Park, Maryland. But for them, it's not just about location, it's about living together, kids and all. They go out and practice their flips on the trampoline, and it's just the most fun. The idea for this full house came from Holly and Heron, close friends who went through divorces at the same time. Holly and I really just said, why not? We were in individual apartments. We were kind of tired of paying rent and yeah. dealing with the logistics of being single parents. My marriage ended and then I had a like, couple of really significant losses. And then in early 2020, my dad died. Just like my life was burned to the ground. Yeah. And so I could turn to Heron and say, we ha I, have, I literally have nothing left. Let's just yeah. do this. They started searching, finding the perfect house on day one and closing in June of 2020. They just needed more people to share it with. I posted in the neighborhood listserv, hey, two single moms bought this house. You know, we have a basement unit for rent. Leandra messaged right away and said, I want in. Leandra, tell me about that decision then. Part of just trying to find a way to like have a stable place to live as a single mom, and then had all the perks of like this amazing built-in support system. <laughs> then Holly and Heron's friend, Jen, also moved in. The pandemic had been, what, six months into it, and I was just not feeling in a good place and just feeling really cut off. And then finally, in October of 2020, that was my decision, like, I, I gotta get out. So how is the place set up? Do you each have your own? kitchen and bathrooms. It's a four unit building. Um, so there's a front door and from there you access directly sort of Holly's unit, upstairs is mine, and then on top of mine is Jen's. And then you can go to the basement and access Leandra's. The four split the cost of household expenses and hold monthly meetings to talk business or about any conflicts, which they say are rare. This is probably a loaded question, but for, for those of us who are married, we're like, Oh, how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'll joke with my husband that I need a wife. Like, you know, yeah, I need somebody well, to like help me. Do. Like, I just need, Come you know, on. <laughs> The well, simplest example is every Monday night is garbage yeah. night and only probably once a month yeah. do I do it because someone yeah. else has done yeah. it. And yeah. it's like, oh my God, I live with women. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say it takes a village and you guys actually have created your own village, right? I hang out with their children and they'll hang out with mine. I can just say, hey, I'm going to go for a run. And there's always a grown up mm -hmm. on yes. site. They've even given their home a name. Siren House, after the mythical female creature. Siren is a form of sort of feminist power. We're building a community that we sort of have the siren song, so we bring people together. Case in point, Leandra and Jen. They fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're together. It's, it's true. Wait, is this for real? Like, seriously? Yeah. Yes. So uh, one night they, I was nope, hanging out no, with no, that. No, 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 I'm not going to tell the whole thing. Nope, I was just saying one night. Can I go on the record and please have the movie rights to this true bunch? <laughs> yeah. Not only that, the women also helped Leandra open a cafe nearby called Main Street Pearl. To be in a place where you can, like, really trust the people around you who are going to always have you. It's like that's, I mean, that is something that I didn't know I could ever have, so. Is there anything you want people to know about what you've learned from this experience? You can do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> Burn the rule book of life and just look at it differently. I love that you guys are living fearlessly. I think that the big takeaway for me is that there is sort of unconditional love. I could be my worst self, I could be my best self. They see me for who I am and it's all okay. Coming up, one woman's journey proving the grass may actually be greener on the other side when you pursue your passion. Stay with us.
Welcome back to The Boost. We are bringing you the story of one woman who broke the mold and the bank to pursue her passion for fashion. And wait until you see how it all paid off. Welcome to Shopo, a fashion brand that prides itself on being playful and professional, just like the company culture. Shopo is an online fashion brand that we set out to be your go-to place to shop. We're all about inclusivity, body positivity, and just a lot of great fashion. The business is the brainchild of 35-year-old Jane Liu. Jane, along with her parents Queenie and Frank, immigrated from China to Australia when Jane was just eight years old. We were poor, they worked in factories, they worked as cleaners, leaving behind their corporate jobs so that they can give me this brighter future. After college, Jane worked at some well-known accounting firms, and while it made her parents proud, Jane absolutely hated it. I remember back then looking at my job and just thinking, I can't do another 40 years of this. So in 2010, she took a risk and joined a friend selling clothing at different pop-up stores. She liked it so much that she quit her corporate job, but kept it hidden from her parents, even though she lived with them. For six months, um, getting up early in the morning, putting on my suit every day, packing an empty laptop bag so I didn't have to actually carry a laptop. And I had to get the bus into the city with my mom because she also worked in the city. That was the start of the business. Yet that business was over almost as quickly as it began. I was devastated, I was embarrassed, and now I was broke. One month later, Jane maxed out her credit cards to create a second business called Showpony, which would eventually become Showpo. We even had three bricks and mortar stores. And I remember the moment that we decided we're gonna close all the stores and focus on online. That decision paid off, and so did her decision to advertise the brand on social media in 2011 at a time when few other retailers were doing the same. I couldn't afford traditional marketing methods. I'm just this, you know, girl just posting away on my social media, posting on Facebook before the days of Instagram, before the days of influencers. Um, and that's what helped grow the business. Was there a goal that you sort of set out to achieve that you thought to yourself, okay, once I get to this, then I've made it. I wanted to make um, more than my salary, which is I think $60,000 at the time. And then I would be able to just comfortably say to my parents, like, at least I'm doing what I love now. Shopo is on track to make $70 million in sales this year, and they ship their designs to over 100 different countries. Plus, her mom, Queenie, is a fan of the brand. My friend always, oh, Queenie, oh, you you wear so beautiful. From your daughter? From your daughter? Yes, from my daughter's family. What is your biggest takeaway from everything you've experienced in what it means to become a successful entrepreneur. Being an entrepreneur, you, you just gotta take some risks, you're gonna fail, but if you make a mistake now, you're actually saving yourself from a much bigger mistake later. And honestly, as human beings, we're all stubborn. Someone can't tell you something, you need to have made those mistakes. So it's just part of the journey. Stick around for more female entrepreneurs who have found child's play can be the key to maintaining your own mental health after the break.
Welcome back, and it's slime time. I joined two female founders who have created a place where kids and adults can let loose. And it's about much more than just having fun. Take a look. I'm doing a job that every day I wake up and I feel good about doing it. One look inside this interactive experience and you're transported to a world full of color, joy, and slime. How did you get the name? Slumu Institute is the slime name for slime. It's from a trend in the internet in 2017 where people were changing the vowels of their name to double O. So Sarah would become Suru, slime becomes Slumu. Welcome to Slumu. And Chanel became Shunulu. I brought my daughter and her friends along to spend a day at the Slumu Institute, a place where visitors can experience slime in all its forms. And go! Oh! It's almost like once you put on your name tag with your slime name, it almost gives you permission to just kind of lean in. <laughs> lean in and let something go. This one's great. But for founders Sarah Schiller and Karen Rabinovitz, this goopy mecca is not just for kids. Both women found comfort in slime during difficult times. Tell me the idea behind this place. Five years ago, just everything in my life fell apart. And one day, a friend of mine happened to visit. She was there with her daughter. Her daughter had a bunch of slime in her bag. And then I didn't even realize it, but four hours went by. This was my first period of time of four hours that I didn't cry, that I didn't feel grief, that I didn't feel depressed, and I felt like a version of myself at seven. You have a huge smile. So Karen introduced Sarah to slime, and every weekend, the two would spend hours playing with Sarah's daughters. I have a 14-year-old daughter who has special needs. She has a rare genetic syndrome called Angelman syndrome, and my husband had a stroke five years ago, and he is severely disabled. So I live in a world with a lot of people who either can't speak or can't do a lot of the things that we all can do and, and take for granted. <laughs> After experiencing the joy of slime, Sarah and Karen launched Slumu, making it a point to create an inclusive workplace by hiring neurodiverse staff. That's people diagnosed with conditions like autism, ADHD, dyslexia, and other disorders. So right now I am pet packing care kits. Folks like Gideon Pianco, one of Slumu's star employees. Does it feel good to know that they trust you and they like you and they depend on you and they just think you're perfect for this job? It's always really great to have people who like me and care about me and want to give me a job that they don't give anybody else or so, that they trust me more. It's pretty special. Yeah. I'm the only one we trust with the cash to go to the bank. <laughs> We had someone stop us who was working in the space the other day and say, I want to thank you for creating such an amazing work environment. How does that feel? It's, it's just so rewarding. As guests continue to discover their slimy paradise, wow, nice. Karen and Sarah oh, had their sights set on opening new locations in Chicago and Atlanta later this year. Did you ever imagine when you were at that low that you would be in a place talking to me, seeing my little nine-year-old and her friends happy. I never would have. And I think that's why this place means so much to me, because it gave me a life back, and I feel like this is all sort of, in a way, part of a rebirth. Let's turn to another female entrepreneur. This one went from barely being able to afford groceries to running a thriving hair care business that helps women look as confident as they feel. Donna Farazan has that story. Hair is such a big part of our confidence, especially as women, you know? When we look at ourselves in the mirror, the first two things we see are our face and our hair. And if we have a bad hair day, it does not matter what the rest of your day goes like. And for me, it was constant bad hair days. What was your relationship like with your hair growing up? I hated my hair my entire life. My hair never did what I wanted it to do. It was either too straight because I was relaxing it with a chemical relaxer and it didn't hold a curl. It was really like stringy and just like limp. There was no in between. Growing up, Gwen Jameer didn't see her inner light reflected in the outside world. 
when I was a little girl, there was one standard of beauty and it did not include me. And to see that on TV and then to see me in the mirror look completely different than what I was seeing, it was just a constant low self-esteem recipe. Becoming a mother was the push she needed to turn her frustration into action. I was actually pregnant with my son. He's now 11. I decided that I was no longer going to relax my hair for the nine months that I was pregnant. And I said, okay, I'm going to have to find products that are natural and safe because I want to make sure my baby's natural and safe and healthy. It led me down a rabbit hole to discover an ingredient called Rasul clay, which only comes from the Atlas Mountains in Morocco. And Donna, I'm telling you, for the first time ever, I had this euphoric experience with my hair. It was like, ah. 18 months after her euphoric discovery, her world changed. She was laid off from her job and found herself in the middle of a divorce. A single mother, out the blue, with $32 to my name. Here I am, how am I gonna pay my bills? The only thing I can think of is to work to monetize more this hobby I've created that I love so much. And so Natural Licious was born. Natural plant-based hair products created for women with curly, wavy, and textured hair types. It was something that brought me so much joy. Not only was I providing products that I literally saw change the entire trajectory of how women felt about themselves when they looked in the mirror, but I was also educating them because that's the one piece that's been missing for so long. Gwen soon cemented her place in history as the first African-American woman to hold a patent for a natural hair product. Essentially, I went back to college, but it was a self-imposed college. Every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, I was at the library or the USPTO satellite office learning about patent law. I'm excited to be the first, but I'm even more excited to not be the only. And that's what really, really gets me going. Since launching in 2013, Gwen says revenue for the business she started in her kitchen has reached $5 million annually via sales at more than 1,200 stores across the country and online. You've created this sisterhood and this community of people who are going to House of Gwen and, and they're graduating and they're coming out of it and they're feeling like the best version of themselves. How does that make you feel? I just want women to feel good, look good, so they know that they can take on the world. And talk about inspiring confidence. This next woman brings her own daily boost to her hundreds of thousands of followers using social media to motivate others to love their bodies and themselves. I'm wishing fewer healthy, genuine relationships and love on you. Bring your head here. <laughs> social media powerhouse Achiang Agutu has gained a large following thanks to her infectiously unapologetic videos encouraging viewers to live their best lives. I have decided that I'm no longer going to shrink myself from the comfort of other people. <laughs> it's been a journey. I didn't start feeling like this until probably like five years ago. I was born and raised in Kisumu, Kenya. My parents really did their best to make sure that they instilled in me my worth. I moved to the United States in 2013 to Indiana, which was very different and a huge culture shock for me. I didn't find anyone who had, you know, the same life experiences as me or who talked like me and that transition was really difficult. My full name is Annie Achieng Agutu, and I went by Annie for the longest time because I always wanted to just be so palatable for the world. And there was one summer I decided like, no, I'm gonna go by a name that feels true to me, Achieng Agutu, say it right. This is a regular body, baby. I started talking about my journey of self-love and body positivity. And I started getting such great feedback from people saying, I really needed that today, thank you. Four or five years ago, I was that person who like needed that message. I had to be my own cheerleader. It always comes from a place of what I need to hear. Oh my God, nobody is going to hold me back. I will wear the outfits I want to wear. This jiggle will be jiggling all summer. My sense of fashion comes from my parents, especially my father, who dresses to the tees. My dad always said, you always have to dress your best. That's your own self-expression. And I really wanted that to shine through my videos. And the fashion world has taken notice from her profile in Vogue to invites to events around the Met Gala and New York Fashion Week. The fact that I am in this space with people that I look up to, representing a plethora of other women who look like me. I just feel happy and excited to be doing what I'm doing and to have a community that is so supportive and fabulous.
No, you're fabulous. <laughs> you are fabulous. <laughs> This Thank is, you. First of all, looking at you as a little girl yes. in Kenya and looking at you today, this confidence. You said one day you decided that you were going to go by the name that suited you. What happened in that moment that made you that made the lights go on and say, now things are going to change? I was just so tired of living for other people. Yeah. I was just doing everybody, everything to like impress people around me and not living for myself. Yeah. And so it was that switch where I was like, I need to start doing things for me, for, for Chiang Agutu, right? Yes. You know, I have to live my life for me. I have to love me. I have to be me unapologetically. Yeah. And you know, this is what I am today. And I'm so glad. <laughs> I mean, you, your confidence, yeah. like, radiates. Yeah. I can almost feel it. Thank you. But you know what else you do? Like, it's not enough for you just to feel good yourself. Mm -hmm. You want to lift up others. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think people have really fallen in love mm -hmm. with you. Why, why is that so important to you? Um, it's because... I had a time in my life where I didn't have that, right? There was nobody really around me who was saying, you're amazing, you're that girl, you're iconic, you're legendary, you're the moment. Mm -hmm. I did not have that support, and I knew what it felt like to be down in those depths. Mm -hmm. And I've always been looking for my purpose. You know, my parents have always been like, you find your purpose and what makes you happy. It really brings me joy to, you know, hype up somebody and, and to bring joy to somebody's, you know, life or day. You have so many followers. What, tell us what they mean to you. They mean the world to me. I think they've been able to bring me to where I'm at today. It just feels like I'm having a Beyonce moment every time I, I you know, I, I, I see my, my followers when I meet them in person. It's, you know, having this army of, army of people behind you really just cheering you on and supporting you and helping you get to where you want to be. I don't know about you, but I can definitely use that kind of positivity in my feed. After the break, we are keeping it coming with our daily morning boost. Stick around. Welcome back to The Boost. We have one more feel-good video for you today. Check it out. A yeah. woman named Annie was turning 30, so her friends surprised her with a big birthday weekend. And at some point, they made Annie put on a T-shirt that had an old-school picture of her on it. And here's what happened next. All 15 of Annie's friends dressed up <laughs> oh. to look like her in that childhood oh, wow. photo. Oh, they nailed gosh. it. Same hair, same shirt, course, timeless fashion. It is. <laughs> And the good news, no one got a bigger kick out of it than Annie herself. That's a fun group of friends. Which one's Annie? <laughs> That's not easy to do either. It's like the real Slim Shady. What a great way to end our show today. We'll be back with you tomorrow, bringing you more of our favorite feel-good stories. See you next time here on Today All Day. Hey folks, welcome back to another edition of Popstar Plus. It is Friday, the weekend's just about here, and if you're gearing up 
For a few days of binging the latest and greatest shows, we are here to help you with our weekend watch list. We've got interviews with stars of the new series, Daisy Jones and the Six. Plus, next in fashion, the designer competition show is back for a second season. And one of our personal favorites this time of the year, The Voice, is back on NBC with Blake Shelton's final season. All that is coming up. But first, we're going to kick things off with the aforementioned Daisy Jones and The Six. A lot of buzz on this one based on the best-selling book. It tells the story of a popular rock band that suddenly splits at the height of their success. It's a documentary style adaptation revealing each character's take on the reason behind the breakup. Suki Waterhouse, who plays a keyboardist, and Will Harrison, who plays the band's lead guitarist, joined our third hour to tell us exactly what to expect. Are you embarrassed to be with me? What? No. I don't really know what else I'm supposed to think at this point, Kara. It's not that. It's... Look, the moment they know we're together, everything changes. Yeah, it doesn't have to, Yeah, Karen. but it will. They'll treat me different. You know they will. And that's just the boys. I mean, what about the rest of the world? Yeah. <laughs> she was sleeping with the guitarist, so they had her in the band. I mean, that's what people would think, Graham. Well, Suki and Will join us now. Good morning, Hi. guys. Hi. Good morning. So everybody's talking about this series. There is so much buzz about it. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you feel the pressure about this? I mean, because everybody wants to see this thing. <laughs> we're terrified. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're so excited, yeah, aren't so we? Excited. I mean, we got cast in the show three years ago, I think. It's been well, a long, been a long so time. Kind of yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yes. I mean, it gave us more time to practice our instruments yep. and really gel as a band. Yes. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's been a, it's been a long time in the making. So we're we're I think we're ready. At this I love point it. So you guys didn't play instruments before this? He was very good. I played guitar before yeah. this. Okay. Certainly right. not as well as I as I can now. Thanks. Yeah. For the job. <laughs> yeah. It was an added bonus mm -hmm. of getting this job for sure. Well, the moment is yeah. here now. Yep. Well, I think it was so interesting. We were just talking. This was your first big audition after drama school, and then Riley Keo, who plays Daisy Jones, did she kind of have a hand in helping you nab the role? Is that true? I, that's the story that I had heard. Yeah. I, think <laughs> I had uh, I had auditioned for a few of the roles, as I think a lot of the cast had, and I was auditioning for Eddie at that point, and I had done a Zoom call back <laughs> i guess riley had been in the room that's awesome and when we finished they were like what do you think and i think she said well he's not eddie he's he's graham oh. and so then we had to go back in and and audition Re for grandma well it all worked yeah. out yeah. Nice. It, it all worked yes, out it uh, yeah suki and i can't imagine the audition process obviously i've never auditioned for anything but when you have to do a chemistry read <laughs> mm. had you met will before to do this read i mean how do you know you just all of a sudden have chemistry <laughs> well um yeah i i know i'd never met will before and and i'd also done a bunch of auditions some of which were piano auditions which mm -hmm. was very difficult, uh, you know, just, just picking it up and probably very hard on the ears at that point. <laughs> um, but when I met Will, um, I, I just asked you to pick me up on your back and piggyback me down the hallways yeah, yeah. of Hello Sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just to have something that we could be like laughing before? about. Uh -huh. Yes, as we, yeah. we, we went outside and, and I said, can we burst into the room? Just piggyback me up and down. And then That's did you, awesome. you piggyback me into the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just so to start like, oh, the scene, friends. just yeah. ran in yeah. on my back. Yeah. Wow. It was great. That's yeah. a great idea. It was a no-brainer yeah. for me after yeah. that. Well, like, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Then you helped me get the role of Karen yeah, from like, that. What are you doing? The piggyback girl. That's, That's, awesome. piggyback girl. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, so you, you, uh, Suki, you released a, a solo album last year, uh, but before filming even started, you guys had to perform a live concert as Ooh. the six. Does, did that give you a sense of what it's like to be a, a rock band and, 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 and everything that goes into that energy that you have to give and get back from the audience? I mean, in certainly in a very small way, it mm, did. Yeah. But yeah, it definitely gave us a taste of it. It was it really gave, fun. It gave us like the backstage anxiety, sort of yep, like, un yep, understanding what that was like. And they had us yep. in. They had us in all of our costumes as well. Oh, that's fun. And we had to we had to perform to basically our bosses. Uh, a lot of them. There are a <laughs> yep. lot of them at Amazon, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yes, <many laughs> it was bosses. a sold out show. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Wow. Well, guys, this is we cannot wait to see this. Uh, thanks so much. First three episodes of Daisy Jones and the Six premiere on Prime Video this Friday. So good. So thank you guys. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Thank you guys. I can tell you as a music lover, that show is awesome. I can't wait to check it out. Sounds exciting. And you might also, by the way, recognize Suki's co-star Sam Claflin from The Hunger Games. But in Daisy Jones and the Six, Sam plays the band's lead singer and songwriter. And he told us what it was like learning to sing just for that role. No stranger to starring in adaptations of wildly popular books, 
Sam Claflin. He played fan favorite Finnick in the Hunger Games franchise. Well, now Sam is, is taking on a more musical role as lead singer Billy Dunn and Daisy Jones in the Six. When Riley Keough's Daisy joins the band, Billy finds himself on the receiving end of some tough questions. What do you think the song's about? What do I think the song is about? What the song yeah, that what I wrote? What about? do I think the song that I wrote is about? It's about starting a new life, okay. Daisy. It's about redemption. Redemption from, from what? From letting people down. So guilt. It's about guilt. Oh, Sam, good morning. Good morning. The series looks absolutely fantastic, by the way. Oh, thank you. Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. You. So I was a bit surprised to read that your audition for this role did not go perhaps as, as well as you had hoped. Is that true? I, that, that, is, that is correct. <laughs> what, what, hap <laughs> it's, it's, what happened? It's, it's as bad as you can imagine an audition to go, really. Um, I think I, I was asked to uh, prepare a 1970s rock song, but my knowledge of that particular era of music, or in fact any music, uh, is was kind of non-existent. Yeah. Uh, so I, I went through a, a playlist or a compilation um, that, that was sort of on Apple Music, found a song that I thought fitted my range, yeah. uh, went for Elton John's Your Song, which I thought was very rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, they asked you to sing a Beatles song, right? Uh, well, yeah, so basically the, the, the Your Song wasn't quite what they were looking for. Um, so they, they came in with a guitar and said, do you know this song? I was like, come together. I said, yes, Michael Jackson. Oh. Sang, sang, oh. And then, uh, you know, so that, that, was, that, was, that was where I was starting this, this uh, journey. Um, but I've, I've, I've learned I've learned something now. I feel, I I feel like so. I've been on a roller coaster. <laughs> and, and here's the thing for folks who, who don't know. I mean, you you didn't grow up singing. You actually learned to sing for this role. Yeah, I, I'd done I'd done a few musical theater um, shows growing growing up. Um, I was in like Jesus Christ Superstar, Les Miserables, but like a high school kind of standard level. Um, so yeah, I, I, yeah. This this was my the first time I'd ever been in a recording studio. The first time I'd ever sung, you know, rock rock music. If that makes sense. I, I want to play just a clip here of of you uh, and your co-star singing together because I think it's pretty fascinating when you consider where you were versus where you ended up. And I think we have that have that clip. This is the two of you. I mean, I, I'd say you picked it up pretty well. How long did it take for, for you to get to that point? Well, we had originally, I think we had about a month or four, four weeks, I think, to prepare get you know all the all the songs recorded to learn the songs to learn guitar um but then because of the pandemic we were blessed with another year and a half of yeah. delays which meant you know we could all grow our own hair and um and yeah basically familiarize familiarize ourselves not only with the music but with each other i think in a way that um you know benefited the the overall the end product and you play opposite riley keogh of course elvis is his granddaughter yeah um did that ever did that ever come up during during the shooting she she definitely doesn't carry the weight of her you know uh the the, the her ancestors uh, on her shoulders like you you wouldn't know to meet her in person i don't think she's just a very grounding very um free-spirited just kind generous person um but yeah, there, there was a day where we were on set in a cafe. It was a cafe sequence, quite kind of late on in the filming process, and me and her were sat there quietly in between takes, and all of a sudden I started hearing an Elvis song over over the over the sort of speakers. Yeah. It was like there was a moment where you know you just look at someone and go, oh my gosh, that's your granddad. That is your granddad. My granddad is a children's entertainer, dresses up as a clown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, this is, this, yeah, it was kind of wild to, to be reminded, I think. Well, Sam, thank you. Can't wait for it. Daisy Jones and the Six is out on Amazon Prime Video today. So be sure to add that one to your weekend watch list. Coming up next, stars from another show you're going to want to binge, Tan France and Gigi Hadid, when we come back.
Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Do you love good old-fashioned competition shows? Who doesn't? Well, next in fashion should be right up your alley, or should I say down your runway. This season's hosts, Tan France and Gigi Hadid, judge a group of 12 up-and-coming designers on their skills and creativity. At the end of it, one will be the winner of the $200,000 prize and get to showcase their fashions. Gigi and Tan gave the entire scoop to our fourth hour friends. She is a supermodel who has rocked the runways for nearly a decade, most recently in Milan for Fashion Week. He is a TV personality and designer who took the fashion world by storm. Absolutely. We are talking about Gigi Hadid and Tan France, and they together... <laughs> Great chemistry. Our co-hosting the next Netflix competition series is called Next in Fashion, where up-and-coming designers compete for a chance to win $200,000. Nice. Yeah, I know. Nice. Big bucks. Okay, yeah. wait. You guys met on FaceTime. I'm trying. Your origin story is very complicated. Yeah, who's going complicated, first? Complicated, but gorgeous. You tell it. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I was um, five years ago, like the rest of the world, falling in love with the Queer Eye yes. cast yes. and... Um, I was specifically spending that weekend on my couch. I think I was like going through a breakup, like crying a lot watching Queer Eye, right? Like, it's, it's very As like. Because yeah. it's so uplifting. It is. Yeah. And it just like, yeah. So, anyways, a friend of mine, Eva Chen, who uh, is head of fashion at Instagram, had Tan at the office that day. And I was like, I'm going to need to FaceTime Tan, <laughs> which is not really like me. Like, I'm not. not at all. You're not one to reach out. Yeah, like, no. if we're like in the same room and the universe brings us together and we're supposed to be friends, we'll get there. But I stalked him. <laughs> You're so, like, will so you be my friend? So, yeah. she literally invited me to her house within that hour. And that I was like, moment. Yeah, I was like, do you want to have tea? No yeah. way. <laughs> and I was like, yep, yeah, I'll be there in a minute. And so I went over, we chilled for a few hours, and the rest is just Wait, fun. I love this. And then it turns out you have a lot in common. I read, and I think we can all agree on this one, you love breakfast burritos. We love we a do. breakfast We do. We ate a lot of breakfast burritos on set of You like a passion. burrito better than a taco? Yeah, we love yes. a breakfast burrito. You like a burrito better than a breakfast taco? Yes. yes. Who has a breakfast taco? I thought you would taco. be in this club. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm from really? Texas. I'm a pro... Oh. I mean, I'm not taco. against breakfast tacos. <laughs> like, that's a lot. I've never you know even I mean? heard of a breakfast taco. <laughs> what? I've got to take you to Austin. Oh, my God. Oh. You, you were spending a lot of time in Austin. Austin. I've never heard of a breakfast taco. Anyways. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I love a burrito. Yeah. I love I mean, it. Some hot we sauce do. on that burrito. I'm right. here for it. But yeah. I, you always would give me like the your hot sauce that you didn't finish, which is so I nice. I think I'm a really good older brother. Yeah, you are. Oh, I love yeah, this. Yeah, I do take care. Did of Did y'all ever think you would work together after that chance encounter? Yeah, exactly. I thought we'd be mates. Yeah, I thought we'd always be friends. But like, oh, I, wow. I think that this is a very specific, yeah. great experience for us. That yeah. just like it worked. And yeah. um, but now that she's done this, maybe you'll be the Fab Six. Oh, I would love that. Actually, would love. I've been asking for that, but yeah, they yeah. just said I like that. I don't really. I would have to be yeah. your assistant because like <laughs> yeah, what yeah. else? Can so yeah. many people feel like they know you? I mean, like Gigi, yeah. we watch you and we say, "Oh my gosh, we want yeah. to be his friend." Is there anything about you that we don't know or that people may find surprising, or is it you know what this is it? You know, I I do think that you may disagree. I'm a lot shyer than I seem on TV. I'm nowhere near as confident in real life Aww. as I am on that TV. Makes you I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say shy. I feel that it's more like he, there's like a boundary, which I think that like everyone has. Yeah. And then once he gets like trusting and comfortable, yeah. then he like opens up a lot more. Yeah. But I, it's yeah. like. I'm more guarded. Yeah, I'm very British. I just, I don't let you in. And I don't say I love, do you know how Americans will always say yes. on the first day, oh my gosh, I love you so much. I don't love you. Uh, I think but then, nice. have you said you love? Yeah. I love you. Oh, you've earned the love. love. No, no, but it takes some time. Like, yeah. you don't love someone on the first day. You like them. Sometimes <laughs> I do. Yeah, no, we're... I don't believe Sometimes you. Sometimes I do. I, don't I, believe I throw it. that around. So I, I love the word love. You do. Yeah. Love you. <laughs> love you guys. <laughs> I love it because you guys seem genuinely happy about this, right? Like, it's changed you, for like, sure. Yeah, I've and never been happier at work. No, like, we yeah. really had a good time. I think, I mean, I am a huge competition show fan, and I've watched them all, and I think you can genuinely tell that we had a really good we time. We loved it. I can well, see that. This show is so exciting, and we're really, really excited. We have some looks. Because ah! we have some looks that y'all have never seen. First okay. of all, were y'all totally blown away by the young talent on this show? Yes. Oh, yeah. Wildly. I mean, I think they all bring such a different... Um, design perspective and that's really what we're looking for yeah. we're not looking for the next best sewer we're okay. looking yeah. for the next best creative director and someone that's going to really inspire oh people's imagination and next not just what can you find in a mall what would you wear yeah. to your office party like we want something that's really inspirational what you would see in editorials yeah, and yeah. elevated yeah okay. yes. all right I'm excited about okay, okay. well i know that y'all are excited because you kind of got a glimpse but three of the designers from season two are joining us now to showcase their never 
before scene looks. Y'all have not seen them. We haven't seen them. But we saw them last night at dinner. We all oh, had dinner. Oh, all have dinner? Let's see the new looks. Okay. So we're excited okay. to get your take. Are we ready? And their thoughts. Yes. All right, so let's bring out DeAndre Hancock. I love that we're doing a critique. And model yeah. Kayla. Yeah, here you are. Oh, hey. Hey. DeAndre, yeah. tell us about this look. Wow, so this that's look cool. is inspired by just my personality. I love to stand outside the box. Where are you from, DeAndre? I'm from Washington, D.C., okay, the cool. nation's capital. Okay. DeAndre's looking hot. <laughs> look at DeAndre. Did you also design your outfit? Yes. Wow. Just this morning in the hotel. I was, no like, way. whipping it up. Wait, what? You'll see it on the show. We pull yeah. things off really fast. In a few hours, they can do yeah, they can some do things that would blow your mind. I can so see this on the runway. I yeah, mean, yeah, so tell Please. us about this look. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Um, this look, is, like I said, is inspired by me just loving to stand outside the box. I love to be eye-catching when I'm out. So I just thought that I would just, you know, make something that just catches everyone's okay. eye. Are we going to give a live critique? Yes, you are. Yeah. Okay, so here's how I here's how I feel about it, Gigi. Okay, go. What I think is, no, I love that you've given us your signature puffer. I love the contrast of leathers. I love that you've tied in the sparkle of the puffer on your uh, underlayer. I think it's so chic. Gigi, I love what, are it your, too. what are your thoughts? Well, I really, well, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a time in the show where you nod to these pants, and yeah. I love to the see them. The pants are amazing. I love to see them on a girl. This is like a new take on those, and I am obsessed with them. I will be copying. Because, we, <laughs> because most of Yantre stuff was on men yeah. uh, on the show, so I love that so you put really, it on somebody. We really Challenged pushed them. Yeah, if they, if they were originally menswear designers to try and yeah. you know, sh show those um, same shapes on women because I love to oh wear gosh. menswear. Deontre, is this not a dream to have these two? I mean, it's a dream come true. Like every day, I'm just like, I'm just like starstruck. You know what? Yes. I can but, but also, you are a star. This you is are. Yeah. We know Deontre. Deontre. How about that? All okay, right. y'all step over there. We got the you. next. So good. You. So next designer, Amari Carter. She oh, yeah. is my model, Amari. <gasps> Amari <laughs> serving today. Yeah. All right, Am Amari, tell us about this look. So pretty much this was based on a breakup, actually. Wow. So I'm all about the emotional storytelling. So you'll have the bra straps here. And then I'm all about the mystery. It's like my alter ego. What? Hold Amari, on. I Hold love on. This. You finished the look. Wait, you not finished the look? She only had eight hours done. Right. It's amazing. Wait, it's but so this gorgeous. This is so detailed. What do you guys think? I mean, Amari is so good at, like you said, that detail. And I yeah. love that she really can make sexy it's pieces so but also put a kind of like a cool touch on top of them so you don't feel yeah. too vulnerable and that's the kind of sexy that I want to wear right. and I think Amari is a genius the in that. The finishes of it are so good. So Wait, good. Are the so biker good. shorts back with the, la la the lace on the bottom? Are those I used to have some of those. Yes, those? Yeah. yeah. The lace on the bottom <laughs> of the biker I mean, shorts. <laughs> if she's wearing them, they're back. If All right. Amari says it, then yes. Yeah, okay. Totally. So that's nice beautiful. to meet you. We Thank have you one more. Amari. Last but not least. Thank well, you guys. Amari, it was so James cute. Ford, who is rocking his James! James! James, I want to wear that suit. Thank you. Thank Look at you. his smile. I want to. <laughs> yeah, no, James is hot. He's so James cute. Hot. I'm like the old lady. Look at his no. smile. James is hot. Um, the, um, the tell us about cool. that. Tell us about your suit. Yeah, so um, I'm doing my own stunts today, I guess. Um, hey. Didn't have a model. Uh, I do custom suits for the queer community. Okay. Um, so I made this because you know I like I, I make a lot of like first suits for people. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is their first suit that's really fit them, or they can't find something that's you know somewhere between a ball gown and a tuxedo, right? So that's kind of what I do. Um, but this isn't my first suit, right? I'm on like six, seven, eight, nine <laughs> suits. This is perfect. So done. It's it's so done. good. I wanted to make something a little more fun, and I'm, I'm like a knit boy. I love knits. I love crochet. These are Where all. Did you um, grow up? Kentucky. Kentucky. Cool. Well, that is right. a beautiful, all over the beautiful country. Beautiful. It's so fun, so funky. Those are like those James it. details that we yeah. really love. And I know for a fact James also made that necklace. That's right. Ooh, so, the necklace is so cool. Yeah, James really takes us to this like really funky slash classic world, and I relate to you. I feel like I can see style. all of these looks at like they the Met Gala. So yeah. proud. Yeah. Can you yes, see how they are so our talented? Next in Fashion is out today on Netflix. Happy binge watching, everybody. When we come back, I'm gonna catch up with my buddies from The Voice on NBC. Don't wanna miss that.
Thanks for joining us. It's Pop Star Plus getting you ready for the weekend. So The Voice is back on NBC for season, if you can believe it, number 23. Very excited to host the show once again. Uh, this time around, the OG coach, Mr. Blake Shelton and Kelly Clarkson are being joined by some new uh, rookies, we call them, familiar faces to the music scene, Niall Horan and Chance the Rapper. I promise you, you're in for an incredible season with this group. And I had the pleasure of chatting with the coaches about everything they're looking forward to in season 23. Blake <laughs> has been with us from the very beginning of The Voice, going back to 2011. But yes, yeah, season 23 will be his last, and we're going to keep the fun going with two new coaches as we give Blake one heck of a send-off. Kelly Clarkson and Blake Shelton are the winningest coaches at The Voice. Kelly, a four-time winner, is looking to unseat champion Blake, who's won a record nine times and is going for win number 10. He's got one more shot at it. After 23 seasons on The Voice, Blake has decided the time has finally come for him to leave the show. You've been here since the beginning, we both have. This is what they ask the greats when they leave. Was it when I married you and your wife in your ranch? Was yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. It was around, I think I was close to calling it a day right when, when COVID hit. And then because of COVID, I didn't want to walk away from the show and, and leave everybody in a bind. I mean, this show changed my life. I'll stay here until the world kind of gets back to normal again. What would it take for you to stay? Was it something I said? I'd like for Kelly to, to not be on the <laughs> show anymore. Well, you said, you said that think. about Adam, and then Adam, poof, was yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think there's too much Kelly Clarkson on television in general. <laughs> what has it meant to you to be a part of the Voice family for this whole time? What has it really done for you? Well, I mean, I met my wife on this show. It's changed my life in every way it possibly can from, you know, a personal standpoint. Juan Stefani, Blake Shelton. I'm so excited. I get to go to work with Blake. We're carpooling together. Obviously, from a career standpoint, I've actually read people say, you know, the only star the voice ever found was, was Blake Shelton because I was pretty much... I don't know how to take that as a yeah. producer of the show. Is that, a, just, is that a compliment? It is what it is, America, okay? <laughs> okay. I yeah. love you, too. <laughs> it changed the path of my career. But when I came on as coach on this show, I mean, every, everything in my life turned upside down and, and in a good way. You know, this has been incredible, but it's time. You know, it's just time for... Not even for what's next, you know, a little bit of nothing would be nice. Are you giving him help? The new season kicks off with the two veteran coaches battling it out with the newcomers, Niall Horan and Chance the Rapper. <laughs> we can make something happen. All trying to lead their teams to victory. What is it like for you to coach and work with just new talent? I love it. I think it's so cool just seeing how excited and poised these people are to like get on stage and show what they've been working at their whole lives. I think America knows about Kelly and Blake, but for the new coaches on The Voice, what are you gonna be listening for, Niall? Um, I think for me, I'm just kind of waiting for them voices that kind of make you feel something, a bit of a storyteller kind of vibe going on. <laughs> get a few ghost bumps you and then hit the button. Like Kelly, you were on one of these shows. Now that I'm alone, and cause right now it says that we did that help you? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely, um, when it comes to making decisions about who's staying and leaving, that's when it's tough. The first step pleases the father. You got successful without the help of, you know, conventional radio. You're very self-reliant, very independent. And even though my boy is blocked, you got chance right here! <laughs> Those qualities, how do they help you being a coach? When I, you know, see artists out there on the stage, I see a young myself, like, you know, somebody navigating the industry on their own, trying to make a name for themselves. And I just try and like impart on them the wisdom that I've gained over the years being in it. Kelly, you took a little time off. What did you miss about The Voice? I definitely missed the rehearsals with the team. I like to break down a song and even make it a little different and mm -hmm. make it your own. So that whole process is very fun for me and intriguing. Do you view any of the new coaches as competition? Honestly, I view all of them. Obviously, the Cowboy, I mean, everybody's going to be rooting for him. It's his last season. <laughs> oh, man. What makes Blake such a winning coach? 
A winning coach? Yeah, like why? I mean, he's done it nine times. Yeah. So it, it's more than luck. Honestly, I think because he's it? just so popular in the country. I think when, once we go live in America, the, the fate of the show's in their hands. Yeah. Oh. They just vote for Blake and oh. whoever he represents because they love him so much. Oh, okay. Um, it so would be one large reason. You don't think he's necessarily got a, more of an ability to actually pick talent? Oh, hell no. <laughs> So much fun. Don't forget to join us for the brand new season. It's Blake's Last, The Voice, Monday night on NBC. Hope you enjoyed our picks of what to watch this weekend, and that's going to do it for today's show. Thanks so much for sticking with us, and we'll see you next week. Have a good weekend. up a fantastic pasta dish with assistant managing editor of the New York Times and founder of New York Times Cooking, Sam Sifton. And he's gearing up for the New York Times Food Festival. Ooh. It's coming back October the 8th. I'm so excited. Uh, Sam's going to be moderating a special panel with the cast and crew of the FX hit show, The Bear. Mm. Uh, so we decided to make a spin on a family style meal from the show with Sam's Amatriana, uh, Triana on, on the, the fly, fly, on the fly, which okay. is from the show. But what I love about your column, you talk about this concept, and this is what we're going to do. It's a no recipe recipe. That's right. What do you mean? What I mean by that is you don't have to follow the rules all the time. Uh -huh. You just have to kind of start with a prompt mm. and get going. Okay. And, and, and I provide the prompt. And then you make it however you like it. Mm. But you add lib. You add lib. Okay, so what so do we start with? Lib? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Especially is, if it's bacon. This is bear adjacent. This okay. is not bear cooking. <laughs> okay. I'm not carmy. <laughs> right. This is bear adjacent. So we've got some slab bacon here uh -huh. that I Yum. chopped up for that little tease. And we're going to get it into a pan with some olive oil. And we're just going to let that get going and render some fat. About how much bacon? I like a lot of bacon. I do is too. Is that enough? <laughs> yes, a lot of you bacon. Work for is it? Good. So yeah. a lot of bacon mm -hmm. going, and we're just going to let that render, render, render. Okay. Mm. And if you don't use bacon, so traditionally. Mm. well, traditionally it was made with guanciale, the oh. hog jowl bacon. Right. But I've done it with salami. I've done it with pepperoni. Okay. Any cured meat, right? So we got that going. Next, we're going to get some onions. Okay. That's going to help us with our sauce. What's your tip for cutting onions? I go across. Uh huh. And then down the middle. Okay. Right? And always leave that guy right there, that okay. root end. Yeah. Right? That'll leave hold, him there? That'll hold everything together oh. as you're cutting. Pro tip. Got it? Pro tip. Pro, Pro tip. tip. All right, so into that rendered bacon. Ah, oh my goodness. Secret ingredient. Fat is flavor, my friend. Yes, oh my it God. Is. So we got that going. And we'll get mm -hmm. that down pretty low. Uh -huh. Let it go until it's pretty caramel. Mm. Okay. Right? 
Now we're going to build the sauce out. Mm. We've got some canned chopped tomatoes, All right. which are going to go in there. If, if you, you in if, if you've had some like a, a good harvest of garden tomatoes, could you use? Fresh? You definitely could do that, but I like those garden tomatoes raw. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you want to like a bruschetta or yeah. something, okay. Okay. A salad. A tomato watermelon salad, that's always delicious. Mm. So this guy goes and goes and goes and goes and builds up flavor. Mm -hmm. We've oh, made some good. pasta. Okay. okay. I've added some butter to that pasta. Okay. Why? Why? Yeah. Because flavor. Add flavor. I'm like, exactly. that's why this is so good. Right. You, you, I mean, you got to pay attention. The, you know, yeah. you really want to get some nice plushness. And it's really like five ingredients, too. It's nothing. But it tastes so, it's so layered. And, and do you, can you, is there any pasta you could use? Or? Yeah, you could use a bucatini if you can find any, uh -huh. or a spaghetti, or, you know, you could do this with shells and have a pretty good time. Mm -hmm. So we get that going around, right. okay. and then what we're going to do when we're done mm -hmm. and we're happy with it is hit it with some Pecorino Romano. Oh, oh, Pecorino okay. Romano. More flavor. Mm -hmm. More Let's flavor. Some red pepper flakes. Oh. Okay. And some chopped parsley I because... Wonder. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Did you add the pasta water to that as well? I'll add a little bit of pasta water okay. in there just to loosen things up if it gets tight. It's delicious. Okay. Hey, Sam, talk, talk to us about uh, the festival coming up. Oh, yeah. We're really excited. Um, we started the festival a couple of years ago. We missed a year or two mm -hmm. because of the pandemic, and now we're back in Damrush Park in Lincoln Center. We're going to have a okay, ton so of great chefs coming in. Mm -hmm. We sold out tickets in the first tranche, but wow. we're putting a new set on on September 22nd for sale. And then for those who can't make it to New York, mm -hmm. we're going out on the road with oh, some of our, with oh, Melissa wow. Park and oh, others, some of our best of our chefs. Faves. And we're going to cook with some of America's greatest chefs on the road. And you That's can awesome. cook at home with cooking kits from the New York Times store. That's awesome. Right. Al That's always good. raves that. about recipes. It's, the biggest customer. it's, it's, it's the, the thing that I, I go to all the time, right after uh, today food. I <laughs> 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 the New York Times cooking, we're giving you a run. This is you fantastic. Sam Sifton, Lots always love when you're here. Thanks so, so much. Good. This morning in today's food on a twist, an Italian classic here to make pasta cacio e walnuts. Ooh. Chef and cookbook <laughs> author Carla Lali Music. I wish there were smell o vision. I, it's, yeah. It smells yeah. so Amazing. good here. Her yes. new cookbook is called That Sounds So Good and This Sounds So Love Good. Carla, good morning. Thanks for having me. Hey, so Carla. start us off here because cacio e pepe you've always heard of, but sure. cacio e walnut, what are we talking about? I know, here? and not like cacio e pepe needed improvement <laughs> as a classic, <laughs> but a couple of things that can go wrong for people. One is is that the cheese doesn't melt yeah. because it's those clumpy. hard grating cheeses. So mm -hmm. I changed up the cheese. And for me, like, it's great, all those textures. It's like adult mac and cheese, mm -hmm. but I need a little crunch. Okay. Yeah. So we've got pasta boiling. That's going to come in. Just keep an eye on that. Okay. And I just like to crush the garlic. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what kind of pasta, by the way. I like a big tube for this, okay. and but you can really use anything. Like um, spaghetti would be fine, but I like with a big tube. Some of these pieces will get inside oh, the tube. Get, mm, and get, and then, <laughs> exactly. The and then bite. you get like a little secret. Um, Wait, you didn't so crush them as much. Okay. No. So these are just going to toast, kind of like that, and I'll press down on them while. They're going, or maybe mm -hmm. one of you will press down okay. while they're going. And then instead of toasting the walnuts in the oven, I 
toast them in the pan with the oil and the garlic. Oh, so they kind of pick up all those flavors mm -hmm. and infuse. And that really gives a crunch. Um, so another thing that's classic with cacio e pepe is that you would use a sheep's milk cheese, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, pecorino or pecorino and parm. Mm -hmm. But what can happen is those cheeses, like, they like to clump up yes, when they're melting. Yes, it's so frustrating. So yeah. I, I have a fettuccine Alfredo it. recipe that is great, but it's very similar. The cheese clumps up on people. Mm -hmm. So for this, that was really in my mind. Mind, and I wanted to solve for it. So instead of using pecorino, I switched it to manchego. Oh, we went oh. to Spain. We went okay. to Spain. Oh, so a little okay. bit with the walnuts mm -hmm. and the manchego goes like, yeah, now we're on a like a European siesta. Uh -huh. We're that just idea. going across. Could yeah. you use another nut tough. other than walnut? Totally. Yeah. So my book has spinets for every single recipe. So <laughs> you could use pecans, you could use almonds, you could mm -hmm. use cashews, you could really okay. use whatever you want as long as it's got crunch, even pistachios. So importantly here, why don't you grate okay. uh, or crack a lot of pepper in there right. because the pepe is the pepper uh, and without yep. that like it's not cacio e pepe it's okay. not cacio e walnut and more? also putting yeah more, more. Oh, the okay. putting yeah. the pepper oh, in kind of oil you said yeah. you use extra virgin olive oil extra virgin. yeah and, and why is the pasta water so important so pasta water is really important because the oil and the pasta themselves with the cheese things will melt but they're never going to get creamy so you really mm. need that water so let's see how is our pasta let's it's give not it, quite done yet not but quite done i don't know if we have time to wait Drop for one in here, let's see. All right. So with the pasta water, the kind of brilliant thing that happens is it creates this like available liquid for the cheese to melt into. Oh. So fat, like any emulsion, fat and water, like they need mm -hmm. they need both to be there in order to make something creamy. How much water, by the way? Mm. Mm. Pretty good. good? Yeah, okay, if cool. you want to do that. Calvin's my noodle tester at home. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's kind of scooby noodle. Yeah, yeah mm. totally. Um, I mean, I feel like the water part is all a feel. It is. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. I usually scoop out and using the. Um, the measuring cup, You're you right. can take out a cup or a cup and a half, yeah. but something nice about using a strainer is that you don't dump the water first. So yeah, you right. kind of, if you need to go back, you can. But hot tip, if you forget about the pasta water yeah. and you use tap, oh, it's go. totally yeah. okay. fine. Right. Okay. Okay. Oh, much. yeah. Um, put a cup in there. Let's dump the Put's pasta the right in here. Okay. I like to build the whole sauce in something deep like this. Yeah, it beautiful. Smells good. Amazing. And, the cheeses, that's okay. and then we're going, yeah, because okay. they're all going to end up in the same mm. place. So using something deep like this mm -hmm. gives oh, you room yeah. to stir uh -huh. and toss and right. go and without. Then you're end up and with it makes something this like little Exactly. Yeah. So come that melts side. gradually. Wow. You end up there over you here. You guys definitely need to get in there. pleasure. Dylan loves this. This is her favorite. This is my favorite. Nice. I mean, I want to plan a trip to Italy just to <laughs> eat cacio e pepe. And, and really it should look good. really creamy and, and saucy. So a with nice something salad. rich and cheesy like this, I love a simple uh -huh. salad. Oh my goodness. This is my big batch vinaigrette. It's the vinaigrette I grew up eating. We always had a bottle of it on the counter. Really simple. Mustard, olive oil, a couple kinds of vinegar. My mom always put balsamic and oh shallot. God. Put it in the blender or the Cuisinart. You end up with this beautiful oh, concoction. Go ahead and swirl. And it's creamy. You can keep it in the you fridge. Make it look so easy. And then it's not a big deal to make a salad because your dressing is already mm. done. How long will this stuff. last in the fridge? The Many ma weeks in the fridge. Weeks? For right. sure, 100%. I would yeah. say, I'm a fan of cacio yeah. yeah. pepe. This has definitely taken it up a notch. Uh -huh. I mean, Amazing. Thanks, yeah, it's Carla. a little bit of crunch. And, and the salt. crunch and the toastiness in the walnuts. Yeah. It's oh, like yeah. what it needed. Oh, Plus yeah. gar garlic. We what kind of wine would you recommend with this? Actually, something white and bright, like a Friuli or something like that. Thanks so much for stopping by. Be sure to check out her new cookbook. That sounds so good. Good. Trust me, it is. For these recipes and more, head to today.com slash food. Joining us with budget-friendly meals that you can make for dinner tonight is an expert chef, Frankie Salenza. He's the host of the Taste Maid's hit series, Struggle Meals, where he creates gourmet dishes that will not break the bank. Frankie, you're just what the doctor ordered today. We need you. What are you going to make Hey, for I got us? all five of you. Good morning. Good morning, morning Frankie. Frankie. Super cool. <laughs> what you going to make? Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna make a mushroom cavatelli pasta. Mm -hmm. So I can show you that real quick. Obviously, pasta is super affordable, but if you just go buy semolina, which is a high gluten flour, um, you can make pasta with just semolina and water. Ooh. Am I allowed to say gluten on air? Is that sure. like yeah, no, you're okay. It's okay. You can okay. do it. How so you literally just combine those, and then and then you can roll out sort of a snake here. Wow. Cut these up like this. Bing, 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 and then with your with your knife. You can just kind of windshield wiper. Do you oh, see that? Yeah. yeah. And you get these things called cavatelli. 
because it means little hollows. And if you think of like cavity, for example, oh. the, you know, the Latin root cavity, cavatelli, cavity is a hole in your tooth. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what um, makes this whole thing budget friendly? So really, there's listen, there's a whole bunch of ways to save money. One of the biggest ones that people overlook because we live in the future and everything is available all the time is cooking in season. If you're cooking in season, it's not being transported long distance to get to you. Like, that's a great point. I don't know. Carson, would you go down to Argentina right now with the price of flights? Yes, I probably would. <laughs> if Jeff Blue went, would? I'm there. Okay, well, <laughs> if you want asparagus right now, it's yeah. coming from Argentina and right. you're paying for it to get on a plane flight. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. That's no good. No. So, right. right. Eat, Seasonal eat selections beets, are for close. example. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've got a, uh, a rag here. You just roast the beet mm-hmm. and hopefully this works because I did cook these last night. But essentially, if you just get a rag that you dedicate to this and, and use the friction of the rag, sort Wait, of this is the twist. Here. Oh. Yeah, you twist the you twist the beet inside. Oh, is a bird going to come get, out of there? Yeah. You see it like, oh, what? Oh, what? what? Yeah, That's a cool. pro so, magic. So beets are in season. They're a root vegetable. So is citrus. You can make a gorgeous citrus beet salad. Mm. Can I ask a dumb question, Frankie? Is there like a website or a place you could learn where things are in season? Like, I have no idea. Just go to the grocery store. Yes, absolutely. I mean, there's this whole like thing that we have in the palm of our hand with all of mankind's knowledge. And you can just say winter vegetables and you'll oh. find that it's <laughs> so root vegetables. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. Cruciferous right. vegetables, root it. vegetables, right. citrus. Mushrooms. I'm That's sorry, cool. I didn't mean to be. No, I deserve it. Sorry. It was dumb. I told you it was dumb. Okay. <laughs> we'll go back. Frank, so, where, where, so where's that's the mushroom a, a beet salad. Real... Go ahead. Where's the mushroom come in on the pasta? Different dish. So we've got our mushroom here. I cooked them naked in the pan. Mm. Got it. And then I added some fat after. It's mm. sort of counterintuitive. You want to dehydrate a mushroom so that then you can infuse it with fat, which is flavor. Mm. So I cooked it naked in the pan. They naked. shriveled up. Water came out. Mm. Threw the butter and or olive oil in there. Yum. And now we've got, you know, we've got this mushroom. Okay, so there's mushroom. Yum. Okay. That's the oh, the okay. mushrooms you go into the cavities. And you're saying yeah, making your homemade pasta, that was, I mean, that was a good budget move too, right? It's a good budget move. Pasta's pretty affordable anyway, to be honest with mm-hmm. you. So, like, if you want to use a boxed pasta, mm-hmm. the thing is to just pair mm-hmm. it with in-season ingredients. I want to eat that. It's not that a problem at all. It. Hey, Frankie, does, yeah, you know, does I, homemade pasta, does it, does it change the cooking time? Yeah, it's a lot faster. Okay. So I put these in right at the start of the segment. They've got a self-timer built in. They float to the top when they're done. Oh. If uh, if you see, it Frankie, takes like, you know, between Frankie, two and three minutes. You're an A-plus guest. We want to say thank you. Uh, yeah. You're great. You can find uh, res- this recipe at today.com slash food, and you catch Frankie's show. Check it out. It's called Struggle Meals. It's Thursdays on Tastemade. Thank you, Frankie. Come back at a person next time, Frankie. Come yeah. back, Frankie.
with Today Food and one of our very favorite guests, our pal Bobby Flay. Oh, I'm so excited. He's an award-winning chef, the author of 216 best-selling 216? And we At can't least. forget about his hit show, <laughs> Beat Bobby Flay. By the way, new episode tonight where two chefs go head-to-head in the kitchen for a chance to face off against the master himself. This morning, Bobby is sharing a fantastic pasta dish with us. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Flay. Good to see you guys. Bobby. Bobby. Thanks for waking up yeah. uh, early. What are, yeah. we, what are we cooking, honey? So we're making uh, we're making a baked pasta. It's one of those dishes that I think is fantastic for like a Sunday night meal. It's very, very comforting. And it's something that uh, can feed the whole family. So let's get started. It's going to be rigatoni. It's going to be some hot Italian sausage, some broccoli rabe, and some tomato sauce. A little vodka sauce there as well. So I'm going to start off by cooking some rigatoni uh, and some salt and water. You know, you've seen this a million on the Today Show, lots of salt in your water. Make sure it's boiling, abundance of water. We're gonna cook the rigatoni for about eight or nine minutes. Well, while that's cooking, we're gonna get our, get our sauce going. So we have some hot Italian sauces that I've cooked off a little bit, some tomato sauce. I've made my own, um, but if you have a good, uh, a good quality tomato sauce that you like, you can definitely use that as well. And we're gonna add a little bit of vodka. This is that, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the most classic Italian-American pasta dishes is pasta a la vodka. It's basically a tomato sauce with a little bit of vodka in it and um, a touch of cream. So it, it, it almost becomes like a little bit of a pink sauce. Really delicious. What does the vodka yeah, do to it? Question. What's that? What does the vodka do to it, Bobby? The vodka actually helps emulsify the cream in the tomato sauce so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't separate. It's, uh, it, it's sort of a binder in, in, in a sense. And also, it's like, I mean, who doesn't want to cook with vodka? I mean, there you go. <laughs> Oh. So, so, so basically, you're making like a creamy tomato sauce with the with the hot Italian sausage, and then um, just because we want to make sure that it's nice and healthy, I'm going to put some broccoli rub in there as well. Okay. And, um, and then we're going to take this sauce. I'm going to pour it right over the cooked pasta. This is some rigatoni that I had, you know, cooked ahead of time. Okay. So we're just going to we're going to cover the uh, the pasta in the sauce, and I'm going to add some fontina cheese to it. Yum. And this is all going to go into a casserole dish. And I mm. love cooking things, I, you know, I call it oven to table, where, you, where you, you, know, you create something in the kitchen, you put it in an earthenware or some sort of uh, oven-proof dish like mm. this one. So, Bobby, did, put, did you cook that pasta al dente because it's going to be cooking longer in the oven? Yes. That's actually, hold on, that's a great point. You want to cook it a little bit undercooked, so maybe like three quarters of the way because it's going to sit in the sauce, it's going to bake in the oven at about 350 degrees, and on top, we're going to put some fresh, some, some grated mozzarella and some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, and then we're going to go to the oven. Hey, Bobby, how do you keep it from sticking on the bottom? Oh, it's not going to stick because, we, you know, there's lots of tomato sauce in there. It's going to be totally fine. Oh, and actually, if it, um, if it gets a little crusty on top, that's actually a good thing. It's like, you know, like when you have the lasagna and the, and, and the edges and the crispiness mm -hmm. on around the stuff. What do you always want that part of it? You get, you definitely get a little bit of this as well. You want to let this bake in the oven about 350 degrees for, I don't know, about 15 to 20 minutes, because don't forget, the pasta's already cooked, the sauce is already hot. We're just heating it up. And then at the last second, for the last three or four minutes, turn your oven up to broil. Mm. Pour yourself mm. Cook the time. This is part of the recipe, by the way. And then take out your, uh, take out your, your pasta, and you can see, this is what it's gonna look like. I see. Oh my gosh. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I hope so. That's what I'm that talking about. Oh. If you're watching this at home, make this. Yeah. And there you go. Oh, it's delicious. Man, make, Bob, make it about this weekend. Yeah. And then basically, you know, you can just take like, take a little bit and just kind of, kind of put it in a bowl. Look at that. Nice and chewy, uh, cheesy. Yeah. Just look at that. That's I mean, good. after looking at that, Bobby, it's amazing that anybody beats you on Beat Bobby Flay. Yeah. How's it going over there? Beat Bobby Flay is great. We've done. Uh, We've done close to 400 episodes, which is insane. <laughs> but I have to tell you, I'm having more fun than ever. Um, it's so great to be able to welcome, you know, you know, chefs from all over the country to come in and, and take me down. It's actually way more fun when I lose because the chefs are so excited. It's great for their community when they win. You, you know, they usually have like all these, they have like viewing parties in their, in their local community. It's great. Be Bobby Flay has been so much fun for me for the last, does, I don't know, does six, your, seven years. Does your girlfriend like watching it? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, Carson asked me if my girlfriend was awake. Oh. The only person awake right now in L.A. is me cooking baked pasta for you. It's 5.50 in the morning. How yeah, well, if you would just yeah. pull that sausage out of that dish, then she'd have a dish that she could eat if you were a little more thoughtful. 
Oh, oh. actually, Carson, you know what? You're, you've actually done your research because Christi- Christina does not eat meat. I know that. Yes. So, but- Sausage out of here. She's all good. There you go. We just put a, well, we just put up a picture of her there. As well. <laughs> well, he, last time Bobby was on, he was very secretive about this whole relationship. Yeah. And then he spilled his guts to People Magazine. Now it's fair game. Oh, so she's yeah. a lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely you lady. Hey, Bobby, real quick. We, we loved your restaurants in New York yeah. City. So amazing over the years. Anything new on the horizon? Anything we can look forward to? In New York City, um, well, we're, we're sort of in the wait and see kind of thing right now for New York because, you know, I've, I've always had restaurants in New York my entire adult life. And, uh, you know, we're just going to see what happens. You know, I just opened a Malfi in Las Vegas about five or six months ago. That's going really well. And uh, listen, you know, New York has my heart. So at mm-hmm. some point, we'll be back there. All right. We'll all right. Thanks, thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Hey, we can catch thanks, an all buddy. new episode of Beat Bobby Flay tonight on Food Network and get Bobby's recipes on our website today.com slash food. Ooh, the answer's gone when you need them most. Ooh, let it go. The Today Show's newest fan. This is the Little Al Roker. Missy Robbins is a James Beard award-winning chef and owner of Lilia and Missy Restaurants. She's out with her second book called Pasta, the Spirit and Craft of Italy's Greatest Food. Missy's right here near us in Brooklyn, uh-huh. in her kitchen right now. Missy, by the way, you were a home run on the 8 o'clock hour. We're still talking about that breakfast pasta. Oh, we uh-huh. get it. No, we want it. We want <laughs> you to come make it for us. But for us, you're going to make... I, I will do that anytime I'm allowed. Yay. I love it. Okay, so you're making a broccoli pesto. This is mm. one of your favorites. Tell us why. Yeah, this one. This one's a little later than the last segment where we did carbonara, and I, I, I bragged about how rich it is. Okay. This one's a little later. Um, there's a few reasons I love this. One, it's it's got broccoli. It's healthy. It's I developed this when when I was trying to eat healthier and wanted to include more vegetables. And okay. how do I do that but still have a little pasta? So it starts with it starts with you can use broccoli. You can use broccoli rabe. In my in my recipe, I have both. Um, you kind of just separate the florets, the mm-hmm. leaves, and then um, blanch it, shock it, chop it. So that's a, a, just a quick cook. Um, and you end up with this. Um, and then the leaves and basil, you also mm. blanch and do a puree. Okay. Um, and then we use pecorino. Mm. We use parmigiano. So it's still so got the all yummy the stuff in there. Traditional, yeah, yeah, all the yummy stuff. Yeah. It's, not, it's, not, it's not like... You Can know, I ask diet. real quick about that pesto? You was that a pesto you poured in? Is that what the basil was? That that was that was just a puree. Puree. Um, okay. And then this is olive oil, which will mm. kind of bind it all together. Mm. And then the gnocchi. One of the reasons I love them, I think, I think a you can make them ahead of time. You can you can make them. You can cook them ahead of time and hold them overnight. This is a ricotta gnocchi Ooh. that's uh, really foolproof. Yum. Like you, you cannot screw this up. So and, should you just and, not buy the, uh, you know, the frozen okay. ones and 
Do I need you to do the real thing? You should never buy, never. Is that never, horrible ever. of me? Okay, I'm never. sorry. I won't buy the frozen ones anymore. <laughs> this is just so easy, and I, I love it also because it's great to make with kits. Mm. Really great to make with kits. It's an easy one. Um, I roll this dough out into ropes, you see, uh -huh. and then I cut them into pieces. Mm. And then if you want a little extra fancy, you go... Um, you want to make sure there's enough flour so they don't stick. The stove can uh -huh. get a little sticky. And we have this little paddle, very traditional uh -huh. gnocchi board. Um, and you just kind of roll it down uh -huh. like this. Uh -huh. Also, like, really fun for kids. Like, great hand-eye coordination. Ah. Um, oh. And I know once, you, once you taste those, you probably can't go back. So I guess I can see that. Exactly. And, <laughs> and they're just easier than potato gnocchi. So I have them cooking in back. It's really hard. Like, with traditional pasta, egg pasta, it's so delicate. It's pretty hard to screw these guys up. Like, they, you want to cook them till they float to the top, but if they float and they cook another one or two minutes, you're okay. You're going to end up with something very, very light. That's okay. the other thing with these. There's a lot of cheese. Um, I have my broccoli pesto on the Oof. stove here. Um, Yum. And, and, just, and, and it's got a little pasta water to loosen it up. So mm -hmm. pasta water is a really important ingredient when you're making pasta. It adds starch. It adds a little salt. And we just go right in the pan okay. here. Coat it. Right. And then how do you know when it's ready? Well, you're going to marry them together. Okay. So you're going to just toss, 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 mm. toss, mm. toss, toss, until those gnocchi kind of absorb into into the uh, sauce, and the sauce absorbs into the gnocchi. Look and they you become I was just going to say, mine would be all over the I'm floor. I'm just mesmerized so, right I now. mean, you should try it at home. We, yeah. You know, when we teach young cooks, we tell them to take beans home and, <laughs> and just flip beans okay. forever and ever. Oh. Um, and then we just go right here. Serve it up. Um, for the, Look for at the that. final plate. Oh, my gosh. I just want a fork right um, now. Mm. And these, these gnocchi, you know, in the, in the book, we have um, tons of recipes for different red sauces. The, that's like one of my favorite things in the world to eat. Missy, is just red sauce gnocchi. Missy, um, that is a that's a parm. ten plus. Look at that, yeah, a little more parm. Mm -hmm. We thank you so much, um, and we're so excited thank again. You. You're joining us from your Brooklyn kitchen, but you've got you're the owner of Lilia and Missy, the Missy. restaurants in New York. So thanks again. Yeah, uh, I hope to see you guys soon. Us too. For this recipe, go to today.com/food, and for Missy's book, you can head to today.com/shop. It's called Thank pasta. you so much. Good Friday morning. All eyes back on a South Carolina courtroom this morning. Alec Murdoch set to be sentenced after that highly anticipated verdict in a trial that